Disney has actually admitted that the movies they are producing, the politics contained, do not align with the public. In an SEC filing, they're telling their investors our bottom line is at risk because of the political nature of the content we produce. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to all revel in the victories mm -hmm. of watching this company get well, go broke. And there's there's so much more to this because uh, uh, joining us tonight, we've got Jeremy Boring. The Daily Wire just put out a trailer for their new film, Lady Ballers. And it's fascinating to see the success, the rising growth of those who oppose the wokeness and the weird culty stuff in media and the failures at the exact same time. But we have a really great example of this because it's not just Lady Ballers. The Daily Wire announces Snow White. What happens? What a week later, Snow White from Disney, which got rid of the dwarves and is going with the politically correct companions, is shelved. They're pushing it way back and they release a new image with CGI dwarves to try and bring back the original Snow White. Now that is victory. So we're going to be talking a lot about that. Plus, we got some crazy political stuff to get to uh, eventually. Chicago is building two migrant camps. This it this it's insane. Clearing the way, building brick and mortar and tent cities for non-citizens. At the same time, we're seeing Democrats turning on Joe Biden and black and Hispanic voters are shifting for Trump. Why? I think in big cities, people are fed up with what's going on with immigration. So we'll talk about that. Before we get started, head over to castbrew.com. If you want to buy the best cup of coffee you've ever had, get our Appalachian Nights while you still can. We got whole bean. We've got ground. We've got K-Cups. Everybody seems to love Appalachian Nights the most. Rise with Roberto Jr. is our light roast. It was, it was very popular for a while. But if you support our efforts in building this coffee shop, and hopefully once it's done, we'll have hundreds of locations in the next few years. If you want to see physical spaces where we can play our content, push our cultural values, retain our cultural values, go to castbrew.com and pick up a nice bag of coffee today. But also head over to timcast.com, click join us, become a member, because we're going to have a members only uncensored show at 10 p.m. It's going to be a lot of fun. You don't want to miss it, where uh, you as members can actually submit questions and call in to talk to us and our guest. It's going to be very, very fun and fascinating. And you'll also get access to our Discord server, which you will use to call in and uh, hang out with like-minded individuals. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. As I mentioned, we've got Jeremy Boring of The Daily Wire hanging out. Man, good to be back. Absolutely. By What's back, going on? By back, I mean back in the United States, because I've spent the last se uh, six months overseas making our Pendragon Cycle series that we've been working on. And, you know, it's been fun. I've been in the two most conservative, two of the three most conservative countries in Europe, Hungary and Italy, and it's been nice to see you know, people taking a different approach to the problems of our time. I mean, in particular, Hungary, you know, we're going to get to this migrant thing with Chicago. Uh, Hungary is just taking a no policy yeah. to the migration question. Yeah, I think Poland has. Poland as well. So so the, the Pendragon thing, I mean, you guys, that, that's a series that's going to be... Seven episodes debuting in 2024. Wow. So you've got that, you've got Snow White, you've got Lady Ballers, of course. Yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure there's a bunch of other movies happening too that no one knows about just yet. Yeah, you know, we're, uh, as with Lady Ballers, we've got all kinds of things that we don't tell people. <laughs> one, one of the things people have said to me all day today, in fact, one of the people here at your place said, how did we not know about this? I said, well, we went out of our way to make sure no one knew about it. As in particular with Lady Ballers, we knew that if people knew about it, there was a good chance they would find a way to stop us. Yeah, yeah. very interesting. The whole time so, we were making the, the film, we were you know, pseudonyms and we called it Coach Miracle and all of the written materials during the production. You just... You know, everybody's out to stop the kind of work that we're doing, the kind of work that you're doing. So it, it's it's you know, what's fascinating to me is that we get hit up. Oh, you know, hey, Jeremy would love to come by. We're like, we want to have Jeremy on the show. Uh, we get hit up. We see the trailer Lady Ballers. And the day you come is the day we get the breaking news that Disney has admitted their politics are failing them. And I'm like, what perfect timing? What absolutely perfect timing. It couldn't have worked out much better. <laughs> right on. We also have uh, Shane Cashman hanging out. Hey, it's good to be here. Happy to be here with you, Jeremy. Uh, I write for Scanner.com, and today I published, I think, one of the most important stories I'll, I'll probably ever publish, and it's about my weekend in Ohio ch catching uh, depraved, demonic men who sought to harm children with Alex Rosen. So you can check that out at uh, scnr.com once this episode is over. Thank you. Yeah, I tweeted that one out, and uh, I just want to say... What I'm hearing from this story that you've wrote, written, I've got people messaging me saying, dude, this is the best thing Shane has ever written. This is the most important thing. Thank you. And uh, I'm going to put my girlfriend on the spot, but we had to do like a basic analysis, mm -hmm. the legal groundwork, be like, okay, here's the story. And I got to put her on the spot. I walk in and I don't, she's crying. And I'm like, oh no, like something, 
something happened? I'm kind of worried. Like, why is she crying? And I ask her if something's wrong. She's like, no, 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 nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. And I'm like, well, you're crying. And she's like, I'm just reading Shane's article. Hmm. And I was like, oh my God. After being with the, these demons for a few hours and watching them say these things, I, I cried watching them get cuffed. Cause you're just like, it's like a release. That's after wild. Holding a straight face. Yeah. But, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we could do a, a culture war episode with you guys breaking all this stuff it. down. I would love it. Right on. We got Libby hanging out. Hey, I'm hanging out. I'm Libby Emmons. I am the editor in chief with the post millennial and human events.com. Glad to be here. I haven't read Shane's story yet, but I hear it's not bedtime reading. So mm. it's not, yeah. it's not, it's, it's tough. It's a tough read, but it's important, especially for parents to know about with how vulnerable children are on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. And of course, sir, just pressing the buttons. Yes, I am indeed here. Uh, I'm ready to get into it when you guys are. Let's jump into this first story. Uh, you'll love to see it. From the Daily Mail, Woke Disney admits misalignment between its movies and what viewers want is harming its bottom line after progressive Snow White reboot was pushed back for huge overhaul. I just, I love the uh, financial, legal, academic way of saying, get woke, go broke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're misaligned. <laughs> Okay, we have, we have a phrase for that. Here's, uh, here's the gist of it. Disney has warned its investors that the company's products and political views may not align with what viewers want and risk harming its bottom line. In a public financial filing for the fiscal quarter ending in September, the corporation acknowledged the risks in, it is taking relating to misalignment with public and consumer tastes and preferences for entertainment. That's amazing. Disney has struggled as of late. To successfully pitch its costly films to audiences, losing a reported $1 billion on its last four high-profile releases. And uh, I don't know if I actually have, uh, yes, I do have it pulled up, of course. Disney's Wish over Thanksgiving weekend was another major box office bomb. And I think everybody knows that movie's basically communist, right? Is that is that the, the general idea? Are you, are you familiar with it, Jeremy? Yeah. Basically, if there really was a God and if he was any good, he'd give us all everything we want. Yeah, but only in this movie, it's a white man who has the power to grant everything you want and refuses. Oh. And God, he's a white dude. <laughs> he's a white dude. All right. Yeah. It's a documentary. Yeah. That's it's what it is. It's a documentary. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, 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 the big news here is they pushed back Snow White, which, which shows not only are they admitting to their investors mm -hmm. what we are doing is failing, they're taking corrective measures. Well, obviously, the entire sort of team reality right marshaled a lot of strength against well first with bud light which i think is the greatest boycott that we've ever seen uh, in the history of the right i mean we're, we've never been very good at that sort of taking economic action punitive economic action against anyone and after dylan mulvaney they you know they laid the bud light low but now with disney you saw the entire right wing really come out against them and, and daily wire you know, i'm proud to say we took direct action and on the 100th anniversary of disney back on october 16th we announced the launch of our kids platform bent key which is of all the things we've ever built this thing i'm i'm the most proud of we've we've got 18 series on there four of them original two of those chip chilla our first animated series and a wonderful day with mabel mcclay i, th I think are both genuinely wonderful shows i'm very proud to have uh, played a role in bringing them to life but we also announced that we were going to make our own live action adaptation of the grimm's fairy tale snow white and we were doing that in particular because rachel ziegler had been the the disney's new snow white have been so outspokenly against Snow White, the the film that made Disney uh, the, into the powerhouse that it is, the 1937 animated film. And she said things like, you know, we're not going to make a movie like that. That movie had all kinds of problems. You know, it had, we're not going to make a movie where the, where the prince saves the princess or any of this stuff. What's beautiful about that, well, what's awful about it, obviously, is that she's saying that the actual company for whom she works, a company with the most brand loyalty of any company maybe in all of history, is somehow poorly founded, somehow had bad values, and she's yep. she's far, far better uh, of a person than Walt Disney was. But what's beautiful now is, if you look at what Disney's going to do with the film, you know, you said it almost a, you know, less than two weeks later, they, they completely changed course on their adaptation. They are now going to make a more faithful adaptation, <laughs> and Rachel Ziegler has to actually be in the movie that she hates. Yes. I, I'm, I'm just imagining, this, 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 when, when you're talking about this, you're making the Snow White... I'm imagining that you're driving this little buggy behind these semis that are <laughs> gold is pouring off the back and yeah. you're just picking it up and you're like, well, whatever, I might as well take this. Oh, they threw that out. I'll take this one too. If they want to abandon their most valuable yeah. IP and the things that made them valuable, 
I see in, in so many ways with uh, like Jeremy's razors, for instance, mm -hmm. and Jeremy's chocolate, you're like, well, if you don't want it, I guess I'll take it. Yeah. And now here here's the Daily Wire ex exploding in, in, in popularity because they're just giving away this this value. Abandoning yeah. it. I mean, I'm just a lowly, I'm just a lowly shampoo mogul, uh, <laughs> but I came by it honest. You know, they if they don't want the business, to your point, we're going to make the business. And and someone asked me, you know, what what will you do if Disney manages to course correct here? First of all, I don't think they can. I don't think that Disney. I think they know that something is amiss. I don't think that they can identify the difference between the parts of their views that are so radical that the public is rejecting them and mm -hmm. the parts of their views that aren't yeah. because they live in a bubble within a bubble within a bubble within a bubble. People who've worked for Disney. Uh, have have told us, you know, Disney has basically fired everyone over the last five to seven years who didn't tow that party line. There's no one left over there who would know how to uh, know how to do this if if they were paid to. But if they do manage to course correct, and if it costs me my business, I'll be like Elliot Ness at the end of uh, uh, the Untouchables. I'll go have a drink. <laughs> like, <what> are, <laughs> we won. We won. There, it would be far better for our culture. It'd be far better for Western civilization for Disney to become Disney again mm. than it would be for Bent Key to spend the next 100 years becoming Disney. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the, the way I see it is if I woke up tomorrow and Disney was making good family-friendly content, crime was going way down, mm -hmm. the Democrats apologized to Trump, all of these things turned around, I, I wouldn't know what to even do. I'd probably just be sitting here talking about UFOs or something. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go mm -hmm. skateboarding and I'd be like, I don't need to do anything. Well, those, it, are, those would be good shows too. I would, just, I would just I would just sit nice. at home with my thousands and thousands and thousands of unsold bottles of shampoo. I, I what would, are you going to do? I would smell great and have nothing to do. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, yeah, I you know, the way, way you describe it is I'd probably much rather have one solved these problems and then retire off into the sunset and relax yep. and hang out get the get a, get a get a nice uh, brick oven grill some <laughs> some burgers and hang out with yep. your friends and have a beer but instead it's i wake up every day and i am deeply concerned about what's going to happen in this country should we decide to walk away from the mm -hmm. culture war can i take a minute to talk about mary poppins my Ooh. favorite movie of all time and something i wanted my children to see one of the first movies they saw uh and and how disney now is the product or the victim of a uh, rotten creativity. They've killed ingenuity. And I think of what Walt did with, with Mary Poppins and the way he built the animatronic yep. birds and all these beautiful things. And the, the meaning of that first movie, uh, the original one is about a guy who loses his job. He's having a hard time at home. The, the kids are missing his dad. Then he got to bring the family together through the beauty of imagination. He, and, then, and then after all that, he gets his job back, right? And the new Mary Poppins that they remade, or it's like the second one, it was my first hint at Disney inverting those uh, those like meanings that are deep important to me because I went to go see it without my kids because I want to check it out first. And I also love Mary Poppins because it it's is crazy. Greatest. You, have to you, do didn't, you didn't want to cry in yeah, front of them. I didn't, and I didn't want to cry. I <laughs> cried because it was so bad because they inverted the meaning in the end. In the end, um, the guy gets the father gets his job back. He's happy and then finds in, uh, value in imagination with his children. That's mm -hmm. totally different. Which is completely opposite of how it should be. Yeah. Uh, well, so that was for me when I first started to realize this is just rotten from the in core. It, it is Disney. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, someone, need, I don't know if you, you guys can fact check me and check this out real time. What, uh, the, when was the sale of Marvel to Disney? Not that long ago, right? Right. It was within a, a few years. It was Recent in 2009. Time. 2009 yeah. is when that happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, they bought, they bought Marvel years. for four million. Four billion. Four, four yeah, billion. billion. Yeah, sorry. So, wow. then my then my point was incorrect. So I'll I'll, I'll set that one aside. When I look at ah, oh, don't let that stop you. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. no, no. Anyway. I, I was going to make a point, but I wanted to make sure I was yep. correct on my timeline. But I believe my timeline was wrong. My point I was going to make was where where Disney is now with the Marvel movies versus where they were with the original Marvel movies. Right. So the, the comparison I like to make often is Captain America versus Captain Marvel and mm -hmm. why Captain Marvel bombs. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one I think did, did decent. Right. And then the last one was their worst ever. And why Captain America helped create the MCU and this big movie empire. Captain America is a scrawny weak man who desperately wants to fight for his country. So much so that he's trying to lie to trick his way into the army. Mm -hmm. And then they have that scene where it's uh, Jack Nicholson's character. I don't oh, know. It's Tommy Lee. I checked. Mm -hmm. He's like, I want. I don't want this scrawny guy. I want strong guys. And he throws the fake grenade. And then it's the scrawny, weak Steve Rogers who jumps on the grenade to save everybody else. Mm. Amazing scene. Mm. What is what is the ending of Captain Marvel? She was a woman who always had the power, but a man was keeping her down and kept telling her to check her emotions. It's it's a caricature 
of what yep. feminists think being a woman is. Well, that's what happened in Snow White as well. And you had Rachel Ziegler talking repeatedly about how the new story was going to be about how Snow White became a powerful figure just like her father always wanted. And I remember she said that, and I was like, oh, we're going to cover this for Post Millennial. Let me dig back and see what happened. That's not in the Grimm's fairy tale. It's not in the original Snow White. Fierce, and instead, fair, brave, and true, I think is what she yeah, said. <laughs> but she also was talking about the father and doing all this yeah. stuff, and the father doesn't appear anywhere. Um, but the other thing, too, is that basically what Disney did was give Snow White the Wicked Queen's plot. The Wicked Queen mm. is the one who goes after power. She's the one who is driven by avarice and jealousy. Whoa. And they gave that to Snow White. They made two villains in that story. They obliterated the heroine and they told little girls love and kindness and caring for other people. Wow. That's not what you should strive after. What you should strive after is to be, you know, a bitchy evil queen. <laughs> A girl, a girl boss. A girl boss. A girl boss. And everybody knows that after we see them all on TikTok, those girl bosses, they're miserable. Also, beauty. Let's don't leave out beauty. Snow White is fundamentally about beauty. Mm. And one of the things that's challenging, you know, one of the things Ziegler said is, you know, it's not 1939 anymore. And it's true. Snow White wasn't written in 1939. It's an ancient, <laughs> ancient fairy tale. It was preserved by the Brothers Grimm, but it probably goes back hundreds of years, even before the Grimm writing and what is it about what is the sort of timeless truth that allowed that story to be older than our country much much older than our country and and i i think that what the fairy tale is actually about is something that we we're, it's so foreign to us because we live in a world where we can't talk about reality at all and we haven't been able to talk about reality forever but there is an in in the original writing it's not even a stepmother it's actually her mother Oh, wow. Mm. And even the Grimm version changed that between their original publication and their later publications because it just felt too harsh. But that right. is, but the, the ancient fairy tale is the mother. And what the story is about is the very common phenomenon that every parent feels, that over time your children replace you. And so the mother gained notoriety or, or attention or security through her beauty. And now her daughter possesses more beauty than she. And, you know, if you have a son, you know, I, I don't, but if you're the father of a son, it's a very common thing that people don't talk much about. When when your son brings home the beautiful girl for prom when he's 17, you know, the father feels some pride, sure, but he, he also feels some despair because it, until now, he's been the one that women look to. <laughs> and now the son is, and this is a, it's a common tragedy in life but it's but it's a beautiful tragedy that over time our children replace us and in our generation where we live now we won't even have kids for fear of missing out on any piece of life the idea that we could be replaced by our kids that part of our job is to take all of our not values although that too but our value and impart that value into the future by creating replacements for ourselves that's what snow white is about i just gotta say i don't have kids but to anybody who has that feeling when 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 your son finally beats you at basketball <laughs> or football, mm -hmm. that should be one of the greatest moments of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. That is you winning. Mm -hmm. That is you winning right now. Right. And when you see your kids succeed, that is you succeeding. Mm -hmm. Your, right. it, your it whole really mission. Is. The other thing, too, that happens when you have kids, at a certain point in your life, there's more life behind you than there is ahead of you. Mm. And you can get lost in memories and looking back. But if you have a child then you can see so far into the future. It's absolutely right. spectacular. You mm -hmm. can see, you can think about their future and their children's future. Yep. You know, my son is already tired of me saying, don't forget to give mommy some grandbabies. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I got to pull this one up. Let's let's go in depth on the, on, on the Snow White thing. So this is a story from earlier in the year. Snow White and the Seven Politically <laughs> Correct <laughs> Companions. And uh, uh, I think it's fair to say, so so let's let's go through the timeline. Here's a photo, uh, exclusive pictures of, of Snow White's seven companions. Uh, one is a little person, because I guess dwarf is offensive, even though dwarf was the mythical dwarfs who are made from stone, crafted from the mud of mountains or whatever. Yep. They decided that was an insult towards little people. But uh, this, I think, is, is specifically because when they announced they're making the movie, Peter Dinklage complained. Yeah, that's right. They probably, behind the scenes, were like, okay, if we do this, are we going to get yelled at? Okay, let's not do this. So they released this photo. So yeah, the most it, famous dwarf actor says that it's insulting to hire dwarf actors. He's well, the only one who wants to have a job. He doesn't want anyone else to have a job. On it. So yeah. I want to make sure everybody sees this timeline. From the Daily Wire on October 16th, Daily Wire announces live-action Snow White and the Evil Queen starring YouTube sensation Brett Cooper 
The bombshell announcement comes alongside the release of the company's kids streaming at Bentkey. And then we have this. October 28th from InsideTheMagic.net, Disney whitewashes Snow White after diverse casting backlash CGI caught by fans. So what? only about a couple weeks later, they release this photo of wow. Rachel Ziegler wearing the traditional dress surrounded by CGI white dwarfs. <laughs> so yep. whitewashed. I think that was you guys. I think you, yes. you said this earlier. Yeah, I, I think that we certainly played an outsized role. Obviously, there was a lot of backlash beyond just us, but we took very direct action. We put our money on the line to directly challenge them. And, you know, two weeks is the speed of light for a corporation yeah. the size of, of Disney. And you can just look at this CGI photo that they released. It's so below the quality standards of, of Disney, who are the greatest animators you know, in all of human history. They obviously rushed this thing out. This is crisis management, and I think that we... Uh, if we weren't the entire crisis, I think that we were the most acute part of the crisis for them at that time. I, th I think it's the announcement of your Snow White that made them say, oh, no. They So uh, the previous segment, we're talking about how Disney is admitting to their shareholders. This is from the end of their September uh, end of their was it uh, quarter quarter three mm -hmm. and uh, in September. So this is a month before you guys announced they are outright telling their their shareholders we are losing money because of a misalignment, misalignment between the, the content and the culture we make and what the public actually wants. That's in September, the end of September. They know this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In October, you announce. And I guarantee there's someone at Disney being like, what happens when Disney Snow White bombs and Daily Wire's Snow White breaks records? That is going to be the Disney brand falling into the toilet. They're going to try taking their writers because Disney has no substance or stories with any meaning at all. And that's why people aren't connecting with it. They're going to screw this up too. Oh, yeah, obviously. Well, what they'll do with this, I I think, and I think that the, the photo sort of speaks to this, is it will just be a beat for beat retelling mm -hmm. of the 37th film. Right. C can they screw that up? Sure, but good, good thing they have going for them. It will be hard to screw up because they have one of the great animated films of all time to model it after. That's true, but I think they're going to screw it up. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think they'll I, slip things in there. So if you take a look at the Marvels, why it so uh, if you the Marvel movies plan after Robert Downey Jr. was Brie Larson would take over as as mm -hmm. the the central figure with Captain Marvel replacing Iron Man as the centerpiece. But she was so despised in the press for being this woke, angry leftist. And, and and to be fair, it's not just wokeness. She really did not mesh well with the other actors. Ziegler is doing the same thing. Mm. She is coming out snooty, snide, condescending, mm -hmm. arrogant, and overly woke. I think that's going to cause them problems for this film. I think they're going to, you're right, they're going to do a shot for shot remake, but they're going to have PR problems because of her. Well, I think they've got another problem. You look at this photo of her with the CGI dwarves. And the question that I have is, is she even in this photo? Did they do yes. a photo shoot? Yeah, they, right. She is a living, breathing human. And sure, there's a lot at stake <laughs> do we at, know pissing off, sure? at, well, at pissing off Disney, but how are they going to get her to keep her mouth shut about this? They haven't been able to get her to shut her mouth they've, up until now. <laughs> they've, they've replaced the faces of actors before on movies, yeah. haven't they? When, when someone like messes up and like, we got to just replace that person. Maybe they'll do that to her. Because look, they kind of like surrounded her with the patriarchy in this picture. They just took a bunch of <laughs> yeah. white doors and like, you know what? This is what you get. Yeah. Think Sne about There's sneezy patriarch and grumpy patriarch. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. Maybe it's possible this actress never actually believed any of the garbage. And was just saying this because her agent and Disney were like, this is, this is what we're going for. Mm. And so she said, okay, I'll say these things on the carpet. Uh, I think the likelihood is she's woke. Well, I'll go a little further and just say, uh, I don't know how, is she 20 years old, 22 years old she's or something? Kid, she's yeah. just a kid. I, I, mm. I've said a lot of bad things about her lately because she put herself in a position where I need to publicly oppose her. But at the end of the day, on a human level, I have a lot of sympathy for dumb kids being dumb kids. For you sure. know, but I, I, I just got to say... I, I got to push back. We we got to stop calling 22-year-olds children. They no, you know, I, I actually appreciate you calling me out on this. I, I went on at length about this uh, publicly not two weeks ago, that we infantilize adults by calling them kids. Right. She is young, and she's particularly young in the way that our culture measures age today. And so I have some sympathy for her. But you're right. She is no mm -hmm. kid. She's an adult. She has agency. She's responsible right. for her actions. And, and I, I, I take that rebuke. Yeah, and, and I think, because I, I was talking about this earlier too, we need to... Remo like the, the millennials are our lost generation. I'm sorry, guys. I know everyone's like, but Tim, you're a millennial. I know, but uh, I talked about the survey last week. Boomers, Gen X, and Gen Z 
all say they will be comfortable with 120,000 a year. Millennials, the one generation, they say they need half a million. <laughs> half a million so, a year. Yes, yes. And there's some weird wow. thing that happens. And mm. I know she's what, 22? So she's actually Gen Z, I believe then, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not It's not absolute. It's not one for one. Right. But we need to start telling people like, you need to be an adult. You mm -hmm. need to start taking care of yourself. But that being said, imagine she is genuinely woke, genuinely opposes patriarchy and all that. And then one day, like you said, is she even in this photo? They they rushed out CGI. They they cranked this photo out. I imagine I imagine she gets blindsided by this. Oh, the oldest, whitest Bob Iger, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Just takes away her little dream. That's right. Yes. And and she's contractually obligated. Mm -hmm. I wonder if she got an angry phone call. What is this? I don't want to be a part of this. It's insulting and ableist. Too wasn't bad. it not just her saying this? Wasn't it? Uh, isn't Wonder Woman? Gal, 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 Gal Gadot. Gadot. Wasn't yeah. she also saying? She Some was, but if stuff. you watch the clips with Gal Gadot, and I realize I'm being very soft here on, on all of these guys, which isn't my usual <laughs> reputation, but if you watch Gal Gadot standing beside her saying things like, we're not going to be saved by the prince, and you can kind of tell that Gal Gadot is trying to be generous mm -hmm. to this young woman mm. standing next to her. Right. She's also trying to like be one of the girls and yes. be on the team. You know, She's right. trying to, to have friends. Yep. Yeah. You know, I just... I, I, I cannot stand how feminists insult women. And I'll tell you why. Oh, yeah. It's not just feminists. I understand that back in the day, men would laugh at, oh, my wife goes shopping. Oh, geez. And I'm just like, there's this article that was put out today that claims women are better hunters than men. And that this universe, yeah, right. Jeremy's face is like, are you kidding me? Yeah, they said women actually can do uh, endurance better than males can, which means pre in the prehistoric days, they were hunting more than we realized and were oh. better. And I'm like, no, just stop. Shut up. Women going and gathering and protecting and raising children is honorable and extremely important. But in this Malthusian political era yeah. where they despise the creation of more humans, they have to insult women for being caregivers. The greatest technological advancement since fire is not the printing press. It's not the Internet. It's not electricity. It's the sanitary napkin. And the thing that no one really can contemplate in today's day, even women today are a woman today is so disconnected from every woman who lived before the 20th century that she can't really even imagine what life was like. I know that women weren't the great hunters in days of yore because they were pregnant all the time. Right. Or had tiny babies that they were nursing all the time or couldn't leave the cave for one out of every handful of weeks. Because... Well, and that still happens can, in Nepal. I was going to say, you can look at India and Nepal today uh, and, and it's still happening. You have to look for it, but it's still happening. And the life of a woman in pre- industrial times for this particular reason is so different than we can possibly imagine it just it's just we, we live on the other side of of sanitary napkins and birth control pills and we and we think that we know what women have been like throughout all of history that's absurd so they mm -hmm. they they make this narrative snow white is insulting when in fact it is beautiful of course it's beautiful yeah mm -hmm. and and all of these other tropes about women and their desires and what they want. I was uh, reading that, why do women like shopping? Because it's the modern equivalent of gathering. And I'm like- I think it's because they like pretty things. Well, That's but, why I go shopping. But why, why do you like pretty things? Col colorful things in the wild, berries and fruits. The reason why uh, women can see more, more shades of different colors. The reason why women are more likely to be tetrachromats, seeing with uh, 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 the wider spectrum, is because uh, the idea being, and I'm not saying it's 100% correct, but it, 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 it's plausible. Women are gathering, collecting, foraging, extremely important for human civilization, and men were hunting. Mm -hmm. So men have spatial reasoning and like they can map things better, but women create human beings. Oh, yeah, they do these studies all the time. You like put men and women in a circle in a room, and over time, all of the women begin to lean in and all of the men begin to lean out looking for predators. It's just, oh, wow. We're just wired. Camille Paglia talks about that with the uh, women in Italy, and she talks about how. Um, absurd it is now that women and men are meant to do the exact same type of job. And she talks about in the old villages, the women would gather around, you know, the well or the pump. And this is this comes up in Newt Hampson as well and the growth of the soil and all of that stuff. Um, you know, women create these communities. And it really is kind of tragic that these communities have fallen apart because that's where you would learn um, things about raising your children. That's where you would learn things about preparing food and making clothing and all of these kinds of things. And now it's just gone.
Yeah, building community is something that women are uniquely good at. And, you know, so I'll, I'll self-promote for a minute. We, we've just released the trailer yesterday for this new film that we're doing called Lady Ballers. And I give a speech in the film about the difference between men and women. And I, you know, the whole film, you're seeing men just completely dominate women's sports. Well, let, let, should we, let's, let's, let's pull it up. Well, let's. We have this, uh, I, I chose the best source I could, out.com. And they've titled it, this trailer for a, quote, comedy film about trans athletes is the worst thing we've ever seen. Oh, uh, what, I praise. What, what, this one. Jeremy, I what praise. do you have to say for yourself? Well, I'm looking up the article now. <laughs> so it says, um, I, I chose this one because, of course, we have to go for the criticism. It's a well-known fact that right-wingers cannot make good art and don't have a sense of humor. At the same time, I just want to get the pause. Uh, Y'all call Joe Rogan right-wing, and he is one of the top comedians of all time. So mm -hmm. nice try, but let's read. They say the Daily Wire is reminding us all with the new preview for its first feature-length comedy, uh, comedy, Lady Ballers, in a world where women's sports is being transformed, the Daily Wire calls foul with the most triggering comedy of the year. So, of course, uh, they're they're uh, absolutely triggered by it. But in real news, we have this story from uh, Daily Wire. So you just went on Patrick Bet David's show, and the headline is, Jeremy Boring says theaters won't touch lady ballers because Hollywood has made transgenderism its religion. Yeah. But uh, the, the just, just to get the whole thing going, you put out a new trailer. Yep. It's about guys who find a path towards making money by identifying as women. But why don't why don't you take it away? Yeah, I mean, it's all in the name, right? Lady Ballers. Uh, here, here, I want to read this from Out, though, because it, it sets it up well. It says, the premise of Lady Ballers seems to be that any out-of-shape 50-year-old white man is by nature of being a man, a better athlete than any woman could ever hope to be. You see, women are just factually bad at sports, this movie states. First of all... What? Nobody involved in the movie is uh, 50. <laughs> Se second of all, <laughs> we do not state that women are factually bad at sports. We state that women are factually worse at sports than men. It's science. It is. <laughs> it well, is it, true. It is truly science. Don't you trust the science? Men. Sometimes. Men are stronger and faster than women. And this is why. Full e stop. Even, the left can't. They can't even acknowledge that basic fundamental reality. Since they can't acknowledge that basic fundamental reality, they can't understand why we have any of the opinions that we have. They're not allowed to know that it's true, and so they don't know that it's true. Well, but then it's, I, would, it's, I, would, I would ask, why then do they have testosterone limits? Why do they have that standard for... Mm -hmm. So the reality is, because they do know, they're just lying. That's right. Of well, and we are. see it across the country. We see in Maine and in California just recently, there were male athletes competing in women's um, you know, cross country events, and they were taking home all the awards for sure. And that's going to keep happening. The average high school boy involved in track runs faster than world record Olympian women. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, we saw the, the, the women's average. U.S. soccer team was beaten by a like high school, high school team. Yeah. 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 When, when uh, we, I was talking about this uh, article that said prehistoric women were better hunters. And it's uh, the argument was that because of and it's 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 all nonsense. It's like wow. because because of uh, um, women have have uh, they carry more body fat, they have more energy for endurance. That that actually creates drag and more weight. And so I was like, I can debunk this very simply. I think actually your debunking was better. They were pregnant, they were nursing children, so they're not out hunting. But there's, I just said, okay, I pulled up marathon time and distance, and sure yep. enough, men beat women in all of it. Well, let me just. Here's a little uh, mental exercise for you. Uh, a, a riddle, if you will. Why do we even have women's sports? Because sometimes people wear dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Answered a riddle with a riddle. We, we have women's sports because if you didn't have women's sports, women would never win at any sports. <laughs> but the, the, the whole purpose of creating women's sports a, as a category was so that there was a place where women could excel. Well, and that's but what is, Title IX was all about. That's right. right. But, and but, now that's been completely destroyed. And the left, left wing, the leftist argument is we have women's sports because sometimes people wear dresses. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I mean, but that, that's seriously it. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that's the, right. The, and and that's, uh, that looks like the premise of your movie where these guys are like, wait, I can identify as a woman, plan the team, and then identify as a man later. Yep, gender fluid. Yep. The you story know, is actually based sometimes on, you wear a dress, sometimes you don't. Jeremy's right. movie is based on Zuby. The yeah, movie. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a thing recently. There was a a a, a trans um, identified male murdered a trans identified female in Norway. Just gave me a headache. I know Thanks. it. 
really happens. My goodness. But the Norwegian Nor- the Norwegian um, papers reported this as woman kills man. Oh, but yeah. really, it's just your typical man kills woman, <laughs> just like we see all inverted, over Libby. the place. Yeah, it's crazy. You I, know? This is why I can't stand. I think I, I'm not sure if Fox News does this. I think they may use preferred pronouns or or presumed pronouns. I think is the important distinction. Presumed pronouns are when these media organizations will use atypical pronouns without actually knowing preferred pronouns. So, for instance, uh, the, the Daily Mail does this all the time. If there is a person that is, that is presumed to be trans, they will use the inverse pronouns, even though they don't actually know if that mm-hmm. person uses the pronouns they're trying to. Because of like UK hate speech laws yeah. or something like that. When this. I was still a professor teaching journalism, fiction, all that stuff, the style guide changed and they mm-hmm. wanted black to be capitalized but white to be lowercase so there's these little insidious ways that they're right. putting they're changing literal language i refuse to do that oh i'll never do that it's ridiculous <laughs> it's really stupid it's, it's, it's insane yeah it's, it's so bad crazy. enough that we have to yeah. capitalize hispanic which means person from south america who speaks spanish <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. does it i don't even know if it means from south america does it well it doesn't mean spain it, no it means speak spanish doesn't it i thought it meant i thought it just meant central south america spanish. But well, not maybe. Spain. Then I guess Brazil is out of that, huh? Brazil is not in that. And yeah. that's what sort of shows the whole lie right there. Right. Well, that yeah, makes it just absurd. absurd. Wow. Yep. Here's a line from this out <laughs> article about us. It says, I love how much you love this article. <laughs> yeah, <that's funny. laughs> There's, here's the thing. If you're going to win an election, if, if, if like you're way up in the polls, you always watch MSNBC, mm-hmm. right? Yes. It's much, yeah. it's much more fun to read what they say about us than what we say about us. But I like this. It's not clear if director and star Jeremy Boring has ever written or acted before. I mean, it is clear if you could Google in the time you did this, uh, or if he has ever met a woman in real life. <laughs> and the answer is, I guess I don't know, based on whatever descriptor they might use for the... How do, how do they define it? How do they yeah. define it? Holy moly. I love this it. This is fun. I, yeah. You should frame this. So, so I just looked it up, and uh, Hispanic is a Spanish-speaking person living in the U.S. Living in the U.S.? Comma, especially one of Latin American descent. So you're, you're, you're correct, I'm but... I'm close. The, the general close, concept right? is if you, if you it, like Jeremy, if you learn Spanish right now, you're Hispanic. Yeah. That's wow. weird. I don't quite understand. But uh, I guess realistically, uh, you know, there's also a joke in the trailer about um, trans age. Yeah. Where, but this is, oh, yeah. trans age was attempted in a lawsuit. Um, I think it was a professor who did it as a, an attack on, that, on the, the concept of identity. Mm. It may, may, may have been in Europe as well, saying, I actually identify as 30 when they were 59 or something. And the court well, said, there's that off. British guy who wears diapers and says he identifies as uh, Stefani, like a five-year-old right. girl or something. Is he the guy who films himself in public? I don't know, but mm. he was adopted by um, other grown-ups who let him play with their daughter. Yeah. <laughs> which is nasty absolutely, well, like, absolutely not in, i'd love in, to see you shane uh, listen no. <laughs> in new york new york city g- gender identity is a protected category which includes gender expression and gender expression is legally defined as self-expression so hmm. I, I i i went over this in 2018 quite literally you the clothing you wear the name you use you cannot be discriminated against so that this this means everything you could you could show up in stilts and clown makeup, and they can't tell you're not allowed to wear it. You, it's it's a, it's against my gender identity. I wear these clothes. Okay. It would be discriminatory. Now New York is saying, I don't know if you saw this, weight and height. You can't discriminate on the basis of weight. Yep. Mm-hmm. No discrimination so, against fat people. So, yep. but what was what if someone can't yeah. fit? So here, think about this. Someone goes to a movie theater in New York, and they're 300 pounds, and they say, I can't fit in these chairs. Well, now you're discriminating because you're not providing an accommodation right. to large people. Didn't the firemen in New York change the weight requirements years back too? Yeah, and cops, all kinds or of m- stuff. Maybe not just in New York, but I was <laughs> yeah. in New York at the time when I saw it. It's uh, yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, I don't get it. But here's the thing: we have to mock these ideas. I agree. What what brought us to make Lady Ballers is one understanding the power of mockery, and and two, honestly, something that Joe Rogan said about a year ago, a, a little over a year ago. So he had he had a guest on his show, and he said, you know, nobody he talks about this a lot. No, Hollywood won't make comedies anymore. And it's absolutely true. Barack Obama destroyed rock and roll and he destroyed comedy and he destroyed America. Other than those three things, great president. <laughs> he also killed American citizens without charge or trial. Let's uh yeah. nice. But he yeah. he made it impossible for us to tell jokes. Yeah. And that's why from the nineties and the early two thousands you had great comedies being produced by Hollywood. You haven't had one since Tropic Thunder. Because you're not allowed to make any jokes. True. So yeah, what is the? Is, uh, go ahead. Are there any recent comedies? I mean, no, I, I, they're not funny. You can't make a comedy. Yeah. No, really. 
And so I wanted to use comedy and, and mockery. Rogan talks about it all the time. And he said to a guest a little over a year ago, he said, nobody can make a comedy now. He said, if, if anybody was going to do it, it'd have to be one of these conservative streamers like the Daily Wire. <laughs> and when he said it, yes, people send you that. What well, Joe Rogan mentioned the Daily Wire, you know, they send it to you. But it really struck me. And I thought, this, this is kind of a, a challenge and a responsibility. If it is true that only the Daily Wire could do this, then it stands to reason that the Daily Wire must do it. If we actually believe the things that we purport to believe, and we actually are uniquely capable of challenging this new status quo, wherein you're not allowed to make fun of anything, including the most absurd things that are happening in our yeah. culture, yep. then, or just we, anything, then we just have to do it. Just just anything. I mean, uh, uh, over the holiday weekend, I'm, I'm hanging out with Seamus and my girlfriend, and uh, it's after Thanksgiving. So, you know, Seamus is from Chicago as well. And we were we were all making jokes about our backgrounds. Mm. The, the 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 issue of family family history comes up, and then we make jokes. Seamus started. Seamus makes jokes about being Irish and being the potato man and stuff, and we play along with it, and he laughs. And then we make jokes about Korea, and we're all laughing at each other. And the left would call them racist jokes. Yep. I would just call it me and my friends having a good time with each other and laughing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you this: in the '90s, we could still make those jokes. They were good jokes. They were good jokes. And there was far, far less racial division in the country. Yeah, I remember, mm -hmm. yeah, that was very distinct. And com coming up into the 2000s, and you're looking back at the 90s going, we were colorblind, we were friends with everybody, none of it was a very big deal. And I remember um, distinctly, probably something like 2012, running into an old friend of mine from college, a black woman, we were hanging out at this bar in Brooklyn, and we were just chatting, and she said something that was totally different than what she thought mm. when we were in college. She said that when people see her, she wants them to see her blackness first. She wants them to see her race oh, yeah. first. And I was like, but but why? Like, that's not what I see when I look at you. And the switch was that now it was racist to not notice race. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Whereas previously, totally. none of us had cared at all. Cult indoctrination. You know? yep. Cult and we're from similar backgrounds, you know, similar schools, all of that. We went to the same, you know, private college everything watching well, watching them destroy comedy though with their ideology was so hurtful for me because comedy is one of my favorite art forms you know mm -hmm. yep. for two reasons it brings people together we can make fun of each other i love kill tony it's one of my favorite shows they roast the heck out of Same each other bro. they're brutal i love that i do that with my friends but also like mel brooks used to say comedy mocking people could destroy your enemies right mm -hmm. and that's what he would do in his, in right, some like, of his look movies. at rickles like right. suddenly you're friends with everybody exactly well let's 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 uh, actually i'd like to ask you directly about the film and what can you say about it? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you want to reveal the plot or break down the, the general premise. Yep. What's going on? Yeah, I'll say more about it than is, is present in the trailer, which is that, of course, we start our journey by trying to become successful, by trying to get back in the game. We're, we're this, you know, I'm a coach and I get together my former state winning boys basketball team and say, hey, if we call ourselves women, we can get back into the game. Pretty soon we realize we're, we're being driven to this by my new girlfriend who is a, a journalist and, and she has very <laughs> ulterior motives, you know? And but she's, she's excited for it? She, well, yeah, she's driving it. She's like, here's what we're gonna do. Uh -huh. Think of the sponsorships, think of the fame. <laughs> and, she, and she gets the exclusive. And and I'm learning, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all these ideas about the trans movement from my eight-year-old daughter. Cause she goes to public school and then I pick her up from school every day and she tells me things like gender fluidity and pansexuality and all this stuff. And she educates you. She educates me, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 as they do. As you mm -hmm. do, yeah. But pretty soon we we realized that it's not just basketball. I mean, we, my guys could literally win at every sport. I mean, there's a really funny line where <laughs> where I'm like, hey, to one of the guys, like, hey, you want to hang out later? And he's like, nah, I got to learn how to do a backhand so I can qualify for the uh, women's Olympic. Tennis <laughs> <team>. <laughs> Although, in fairness, we don't use the term Olympic because you may not know this. You do not have free speech in this country where the word Olympic is concerned. What? Really? Is it like what? happy That's why I say global games. Yeah, it's the global games. You cannot use the term Olympics by law in this what? country. An actual statute really? in the United States legal uh, legal code. Why? Some I'm, stupid I'm running for reason. President now. Yeah, you got to run for president. We need an executive order. Uh, well. When did you realize that in the process, though? Like when you were after very late, Very late in the process, <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. Uh, unfortunately. And anyway, all of this to say... And this brings it full circle to what, to what got me on the topic of promoting my own beautiful movie, is that at, at, toward the end of the movie, I have to make a case for why, even though men are better at virtually everything, now that's a joke, but everything in this case is sports, you know, why would someone who is a female want to continue being a female? Would they not aspire to be a man? 
And it was challenging to come up with a list of things to say in a serious moment of the film that women are good at, that people wouldn't roll their eyes at. And then I, because the things that women are good at are things that our culture has decided don't have high value. Well, and, and this women is when I decided realized that they don't have high value, right. which is insane. And this is when I realized that, uh, not for the first time, but had it really reinforced that the war on men is a war on women. Essentially, essentially what the culture hates the most is women, not men. I agree. It's women. That's mm -hmm. correct. I, I, I've, I've said this for a while. Feminism is destroying femininity. Yes. It is yes. telling women to uh, to adopt masculine features, masculine roles. This is why men are bad. So be just like them. It, it's, it's, <laughs> it's 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 insane. We we when you look at the numbers, transgender youth. I think one study said eighty five percent were female. To it's men. mostly right. women cut. Yeah, it's mostly right. young girls getting women their breasts cut men. off and wanting to be men. Yeah. Right. And what they don't realize is it doesn't matter what they do; they're never going to be men. They're still going to be short. They're never going to like look like men. They're never going to have that power, and they're never going to have that respect. And it doesn't matter even if you put like Jace on the name tag. You know, you're, yeah. it's it's never going to be you. Yeah. When when I was a kid, my mom was in a she was a corporate attorney, and um, she was always she was often talking about how she was the only woman in the boardroom and she was like trying to dress and be more masculine and stuff mm. and she and the women of her generation i remember her friends and you know my uh, mother-in-law and everything would talk about how they didn't want to cook and they didn't want to clean and they didn't want to do any of these things and i had a stepmother who all she wanted to do was be a mom she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom she wasn't able to have children of her own mm -hmm. and so she looked at these other women she looked at my mom and everything and was just horrified that they hated everything that she wanted mm. you know they gave up everything that she Sorry. wanted most Jeez. it's the the attack on men is like first of all let's get rid of fatherhood role models in the house the nuclear which is family. so terrible and then if they attack the women it's basically they can prevent that from ever even happening mm -hmm. right no babies no household you just grow up and be miserable and then you die. Yes, but the the misery is coming, everyone. Oh, misery! Yeah, oh, it's, it's I'm right terrified. The yeah, of the misery. M single, like, look, too many millennial men and women are single, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're not having families. And yes, uh, I always preface this with, I am doing my family stuff. Calm down, everybody, because I know full well the the idea of when Chelsea Handler said she wakes up at six in the morning smokes she does drugs and then masturbates and goes back to bed and i'm like that's wonderful i'm sure she's loving it i'm not and sure then she's when, loving it no i think it's 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 a dopamine hit it's triggering it's it's dopamine but after, what's going to happen yeah, what's going to happen when she's 70 Absolutely. in the hospital after suffering a cerebral hemorrhage and she's or she or some kind of disease mm -hmm. and she's dying and she's by herself and the doctor says press the button if you need us and walks out of the room and then she's just staring at a cold wall with with, with nothing to show for it yep. with no one around her no, no future ahead of her. My grandfather was buried today. He died uh, Sunday night. And it's this amazing kind of rebuke of parts of my life. I mean, parts of my life, he really inspired. He was an entrepreneur late in life, uh, very late in life, found success and, and inspired entrepreneurism in, in his sons and grandsons in particular. But other parts of my life are very distinct from his. You know, he had seven children. He has 22 grandchildren, great grandchildren. You know, he, he died basically two months shy of becoming a great, great grandfather. And his legacy, long after the memory of him is gone, I mean, one generation from now, two generations from now, nobody will remember his name, right? Do you know your great, great grandfather's name? And if even if you do, do you know your great, great, great grandfather's name? I mean, history will forget my grandfather. But a thousand years from now, the impact of his life will still exist through mm. The children oh, yeah. that he's pushed into the future and Absolutely. the values that he's pushed into those children that get pushed into the future generation after generation. And somehow we came of age at a time when we when our culture ascribed not only no value to that, but negative value to it. Yeah. Yep. One of the, what if I, we deprive people? I, of? I bring this up a lot, but one of those Emmanuel brothers, Rahm Emanuel's brother, talked about why we don't need old people anymore. Old people should stop caring for themselves and basically just die. Not basically, they right. said die, you know? And I, I tell people all the time, knowing your grandparents is the best. That was, little has inspired me in this life. 
more than my grandfather. Yeah. Uh, he was a, a true uh, inspiration to me in so many ways as a family man, as a business guy, and, and a creative. And uh, a lot of people don't have that attachment to their grandfathers or, or any grandparent. And that is uh, truly sad to have like that, uh, be, to be divorced from history like that, because they can teach you so much from the, the decades that they acquired and all the stuff, you know, all the information they got. Um, so yeah, now we have a world where they're not having kids to become the role models and they don't have any connection to the past. So there'll be these very decrepit, meaningless vessels but, of humans. But I do think more and more, here we are sitting here talking about the success Daily Wire's having. I mean, forcing Disney to course correct on Snow White is hilarious. And if anything, that's a tremendous victory, but let's see your Snow White do better because, you know, th these companies need to learn a real lesson. Yep. But we're watching all these tremendous victories. We're learning now that um, there's a huge swing towards Trump, whether you're for Trump or anybody else. Biden is losing support tremendously. Oh, I mean, SNL mocked him for the first time. So the jig is wow. up. Oh, what do they do? Jig they is up. Mocked him, huh? Yeah. Oof. What they're they in do? trouble. I didn't see it. Who played Biden? Hmm. Do you know the names of anybody? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I don't know anybody on there anymore. As I said that, I was like, what are you? Saturday Night Sam? Yeah. But <laughs> here's, here's what Seth I'm saying. Seth Rich Bigby. Yeah. These, yeah. Here's the scary future that I see. Conservatives are having kids. Yep. And liberals are aborting their kids. Mm. And even to some some degrees, even some of their kids are being sterilized. It's I don't want to act like it's all of their kids. It's a few thousand, I think, and it's in the tens of thousands that are getting these treatments. But what is the future in 20 years going to be? These 30 f millennials right now, what's the average millennial age? Like 36 or 37, right? Yep. Yeah, my brothers are yeah, that age. Yeah. They're Nearing their 60s. They're going to be uh, 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 nearing their 60s in 20 years. They're going to be getting close to retirement. Oh, who knows? By then, retirement age might be like 77 or something, especially considering the economy now. Well, actually, I take that back. Dep considering this backlash, by then, retirement age might go down. And be But imagine these people when they're retired. No families, no savings. What do they do? The inverse is that conservatives have kids. Mm -hmm. 20 years from now, there is going to be two to one conservative to liberal kids. Now, people may change their values. So some of the kids of, par of conservative parents may adopt liberal ideologies, but it's also true that the inverse could happen, especially with the pushback in schools. I think it's fair to say, based on the fact that liberals overwhelmingly abort relative to conservatives and conservatives 20 years ago were already having more kids, you are going to have woke feminist millennial retirees, males and females, single, childless, begging for handouts from a government that will not give it because conservatives win the voting block. Mm. We talk a lot about like the par parallel economy, right? But I, I really think it's gonna be not parallel realities, but fractured realities where we're going to inhabit the real world. We were talking about before we went live about taking the physical space back, you know, and they're going to inhabit the digital space. That's where all their identities are mostly uploaded. They care more about the digital world than they do the physical well, but world. Here, here's an interesting wrinkle on that is AI. Oh yeah. <laughs> that the digital world is becoming more and more artificial over time. Yeah. And I think that there's going to be a reaction to that where people want tangible physical events and mm -hmm. engagements. Yeah. You know, it, conservatives love to catastrophize, right? Oh, AI mm -hmm. is the end of the world, is the end of this. And well, of course it's a massive, it's another one of those massive technological changes and the world will change around it. But there are good things that come out of these advances. And one of the good things I suspect out of the out of this new sort of artificial digital age will be a return to actual human connection. I, I only, have, only when I sit in a room with agree. you and look you in the eye totally. and talk to you do I know that you're a real person. It's like well, looking at people go back and, and getting into vinyl again after being so But yeah, I mean, a kid, exactly. kids still go ride bikes. Totally. You know? my, my fear is that the other half of that will be people embracing the AI world so much that they want to marry the AI. And they will like have people the, yes. literally like fighting the, to like be married to AI. Exactly. But it Corey will happen. And, of course, that, all, of course that will happen. Yeah. All the bad things will happen. Yes. But this is... But good things will yes. also I want to catastrophize, but, 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 Jeremy. But this, is, <laughs> this, is, this is the divergence you mentioned. Because, uh, so we just bought, we're building, we're building Freedomistan. And it's been in construction for a minute, but uh, uh, awesome news. I mean, the drywall is going up in the in the, in the the lower studios. Sick. Uh, yeah, we've got the designs for the indoor and out, out, outdoor skate park portion. So it mm -hmm. is moving and we're thinking maybe by February, uh, you know, it could even be sooner than that. But uh, uh, we just bought a sound system from an antique store from the 90s with cassette, vinyl, AM, FM radio, and a CD player. And the rule is when you're playing music in the park, it has to be a vinyl played mm. from start to finish. You will turn the vinyl on, you will go and you will flip it over, you finish that album before you can play anything else. Why? I cannot stand 
the digital playlist reality. Right. I can't stand that whenever you open the app, it's yes. one song from one band and it's 700 bands with one right. song. And so I just said, no, 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 I don't want that anymore. I want the core original. Give me an album from one band. We're listening imagine, to it. Imagine that there are adults alive today who have never listened to the B-side of Abbey Road. <laughs> <laughs> They don't know They're that off. that's a thing. Yeah. Right. yeah. They yeah. may have heard every song off of it, mm -hmm. but that is not the experience yeah. of listening to Dude, you'd be shocked when I travel with my records, how many people are like, what the hell are these? They look at them <laughs> like they're like this foreign, like they pull it out. Of, they literally see them open the box and then take it out. And they're like looking like, I've never seen this in my life. I'm like, dude, it's a record. Like, you don't know what that is? Really? Yeah. But <laughs> I, you'd, be, you'd be amazed. People literally okay. have never seen it before. It's I, I want to expand out on what Jeremy was I saying too, because I, I agree. I love the mixtape, but I, I, this would be nice if, if the, positivity does grow out of this and uh people embrace family again yep. you know that would be an amazing uh transition out of this hellscape that we've been in and oh, it's yeah. possible because i i'm in a community now where i'm surrounded by people who are beautiful families and yep. when i was in new york i was not surrounded by that at all it was uh, completely defunct and anti-family I, I i do just have to mention this that we pulled up an article previously that you were on patrick bet david's podcast in miami and now you're here in effectively west virginia and i'm like man yeah this guy works cool you were driver. just in uh, where were you you were in uh Buda, where you yeah were? Been, i've been overseas this is my first time in the states since july 10th wow and i scouted for a month in europe before that so by christmas it will be true that i spent the majority of 2023 overseas wow other than family is there stuff that you realize you were missing from mexican here? food <laughs> <laughs> true that's a big one. I miss there's that no, here. We don't no have ta there's we don't no Taco have Bell. Here. Yeah, we don't we don't have great Mexican food in Nashville either, but we have some Mexican yeah, yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I go to Texas, I'm always like, "We need tacos." Yes, it's time for tacos. But to be fair, the American versions of it are nowhere near what Mexican food actually is. Oh yeah, I like, but, but it's ours. You know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like exactly. the American versions. Yeah, I want all of well, that when food. I say Mexican food, I mean Tex-Mex. Yeah, yeah right. I want. I want like the American yes. version of Chinese food. I just want. I don't want sea vein. cucumbers. I want like General Tso's <laughs> chicken and some yeah, yeah. you know lo mein. That's what well, I want. let's let, let's get a little bit more political in this. Uh, so we talked a lot, about, a lot about culture, but we have this story from the Chicago Tribune. Construction on Brighton Park migrant camp to begin with state involvement this week, despite aldermanic opposition. Can I just point out really quickly that beautiful word aldermanic? Man, I have not made a movie wow. about this. Just I want to be clear about the aldermanics. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Aldermans. <laughs> aldermen are the, are like the mayors of a neighborhood. So I love the aldermanic it's opposition. A great word. It's yeah. a great word. But uh, here's what's happening: the people of Chicago are furious. They do not want illegal immigrants in their city. Same is true for New York. Democrats are suffering because of this, but it doesn't matter why. Several reasons. There's one base reason. And the simple reason is there are men who are willing to take blood money stripped from your pockets and your bank accounts to build facilities for non-citizens. And they don't care. They don't care about your community. They don't care about you. They don't care about what happens to the city. When the government comes to these men in these construction vehicles and says, here's the project, they say, okay. I'll take money no matter where it comes from. So the people of Chicago in opposition to this are having their tax dollars taken and these men are willing to accept it. That's the first problem. Mm -hmm. Second problem is politically, they do not care what the people of the city actually want. They will build facilities for non-citizens and this is going to be, I think politically apocalyptic for Democrats because now we're seeing Donald Trump is improving among black and Hispanic voters. And I think this is partly due to you get these videos out of Chicago where it's black community members screaming, get these illegal immigrants out of our neighborhoods. Yep. They don't care. But but let me just stress also the sheer shock when I saw a video on Twitter X where they're like, we are building a camp on the south side of Chicago for illegal immigrants. We're not talking like a small park. We're talking a massive multi acre facility. They're talking brick and mortar structures. Yeah. What do they mean by camp? They just mean a building. No, they're building multiple structures yeah well this is like when you hear a refugee camp inside the gaza strip and then it turns out it's a city with skyscrapers right, yeah, it's, right. interesting word like camp, camp is a yeah well be... well one of them is a tent city so i guess you can call sure. it a, but right. when you have multiple acres i don't know if a, a if it has is... plum if it has plumbing though it's a, at a minimum it's a migrant clamp 
Well, we right. had, there was a thing in New York just recently where they put up a whole bunch of dormitories at Floyd Bennett Field, which mm. is, a, you know, an old airfield. And uh, migrants were warning each other not to go there. They were like, oh, no, it's not acceptable. And one woman said, we did not go because we already know the situation over there. We saw people returned with children. They say it's not suitable there. There is nothing there, not even a television. <laughs> no TV? <laughs> no TV. Oh, that's, my goodness. That, that's a it's violation of like I think it's a human, human rights, rights violation. Yeah, a hum, yeah. Human, UN charter violation. We got it. What's going on? No TVs. We should protest. I have to say, I have loved seeing, you know, black people in Chicago and New York just be like, no, we're not doing this. Look at Eric and Adams. And it makes me think that maybe we can remember. Yeah, Eric Adams has been really working on this and he has been stymied at every step of the way and now they're attacking him now they're attacking him claims. they're they're destroying the schools mm -hmm. you know that were already faltering um but i have loved seeing black americans stand up and be like no we don't want this it makes me think that perhaps all of us americans or us original americans can get together and be like we're americans we love our country mm -hmm. we don't want it to be overrun race is not the thing that should divide us here you yeah. know it should well, be the border absolutely. Cul culture <laughs> is real and the great lie of the 20th century is that culture is not real, that all cultures are equal, that you can... Relativism. That you can, yeah, you can basically shuffle the deck of all humans across the entire globe and still wind up with the exact same soup, and you can't. No. You know, France is a place for French people, and England is a place for the English, and America is a place for Americans. And you could say, well, there's no such thing as Americans, and that's true, but there's no such thing as English either. Like, at a certain point, cultures come and they go. And America, yes, is a nation that was founded largely by immigrants but those immigrants did come together and create a culture i'm not anti-immigration but i'm anti any kind of immigration that radically and rapidly changes the makeup of the culture of right. a country because you can't have a nation if you don't have culture you have to have common culture well this this is an important uh point uh the constitution uh, the bill of rights are what 1789 we had free speech. Yeah, they'd still arrest you for obscenity laws if you spoke in certain ways, like George Carlin famously, even in, in the 70s, you get arrested for it. It is the culture that we have today. This is why I say we're winning. A lot of people don't want to accept it, but you can look at the tangible realities of the Bud Light boycott. Mm -hmm. I want to say right now, I'm a huge fan of Bud Light and a big supporter of theirs. After they sponsored UFC, we were very critical of them. But then seeing what Sean Strickland said, did you see this one? No. So so Bud Light, but, uh, but let me just... Wrap that point up. We're winning, by the way. And this yes, is the point. We are winning. Sean Strickland said he was so happy that Bud Light sponsored UFC. And we're like, no, oh, come on, Bud Light, they're crooked. And then he's like, now they're putting money behind every word I say. And I went, oh, hmm. OK, I, I agree. I agree. There's no backing down for Bud Light now. MMA fighters are notoriously based. And he said some stuff that I can't say on YouTube. And the UFC paid for it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Bud Light paid for it. Yep. So now I'm like, okay, I'll take it. There you go. He's fixing the brand by going a little far in the other direction. Well, you've yeah. seen their advertising. It's sort of like, it's like 80s spectacular advertising all of a sudden. I do make a Bud Light joke in Lady Ballers, and maybe I should reevaluate it. Although it's too late now. <laughs> well, but we were wondering when's Jeremy's beer? I mean, you've got everything else? Yeah, I will. Uh, here's some breaking news oh. for our Tim Cast fans. There will not be a Jeremy's beer. When you, when you watch Lady Ballers this weekend, you will notice that there are cans all throughout the movie that say Jeremy's Pilsner on them. They're very well designed, and that's because I thought that by the time the movie came out, I would release my Pilsner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it turns out canned beverages are very difficult, and alcohol yep. is even more difficult still. And uh, I've, I've made the decision that, and I don't drink. So somehow in this combination of of challenges, I thought, man, then maybe just let that one slide. Okay. But uh, as, what I wanted, what I wanted to say about winning is, when you look at freedom of speech, despite the government manipulations w and collusion with big tech, mm -hmm. we are, I believe, we are winning. We're winning culturally. We're not winning in pol in the realm of policy yet, which matters. Right. But I agree that there's, I agree that there's a shift culturally in our favor. Right. We've begun forwarding the line. Yes. As, as the way I would describe it, we may not have the whole battlefield, but also the Second Amendment. I I I, there, I I do not believe there is. We have the whole battlefield. I mean, or I should say, we have we have more than twenty six state states, uh, constitutional carry or mm -hmm. permitless concealed carry. I think Florida, and so that is the majority of the battlefield in terms of statewide. Now they're trying still to ban things, but they're losing. There was a poll, uh, NBC News, the poll that showed young voters are leaning Trump by like two. Uh, it's a four point margin. Also show that the majority of people, whether you're Democrat or Republican, have guns in their household. Yeah. So I think we're winning constitutionally. Now, I'd love to see uh, uh, 
there's, there's a lot of stuff going to the Supreme Court. Let's see, you know, what we get through. There's, um, I don't, I don't know if I should say too much, but one of our guests was talking about another case on uh, uh, the NFA, which is being, uh, is going to, is going to be uh, challenged all the way to the Supreme Court. We'll see how it plays out, but I think, I think we are winning. So I'm having a good time. There's bad stuff going on. We call it the bad stuff all the time. Yeah. But uh, the night is always darkest before the dawn. I, however, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm seeing a lot see of it. people on both sides understand that the border is a mess. You yep. know, like yeah. when I saw Eric Adams talk about it, I was completely shocked. I've been to the border a few times reporting on it this year. It is a complete tragedy, completely yeah. open. The amount of fentanyl coming through is is absurd and, and undocumented people who just get sent wherever they want to go. And it's like soft TSA down there. I mean, it's so I, bad. I am livid at the story of the construction happening in Chicago. And I, oh, I agree. All, all of my yeah. anger is at the working class construction guys, 100%. Did you see? Um, they they should have said, "I ain't touching that money." Instead, they were just like, "Yeah, I'll take money to disrupt and destroy this community." It's 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 disgusting. There should be a concept of uh, country over company. The founding mm. fathers were wealthy men. They were very wealthy, and they had every reason to say to anyone with patriotic sentiments, "Shut your mouths! You're going to spoil my fun." I've got I've got land. I've got buildings. I've got properties. I've got companies and I got a family to protect. I ain't signing that declaration it's... of independence. They did the opposite. They said the king will kill me. He will take my family. He will beat my children. He will steal from me and I will be left destitute. But it must be done. It's not rare in these big cities for these companies to have the unions who are with the government tight, yep. tight, you know, so that's why maybe this is not as surprising. Yeah, that's right. Did it's you just, see the, the Washington Post came out in favor of border control? They said in a no, wow, yeah, in an editorial board, they said um, Democrats might flinch at the proposition, but the Republican idea that it should be tougher for asylum seekers to enter the United States makes some sense. Wow, <laughs> some, yeah. some, just some. Yeah, he said. They said um, hundreds of thousands of people who reach the southern border every year hope to leave a dismal existence behind, but most are not fleeing persecution. In fear for life or limb, they seek asylum because the U.S. asylum system is the only door available to knock on. That's uh, the, in the Washington the, Post. The, the, board, the Border Patrol that I talked to down there, all, all different types of people are like, there's so many just men about our age coming over. They don't know where they're from. They're not like, they're from, not all from Mexico. They're from China. No, mo most they're from of them Africa. Are, yeah. <laughs> they're all from all various places. Honduras. And, Ukraine. And they, and they do get a lot of people who are repeat offenders, as in they've come, been kicked out, and they mm -hmm. come back. Uh, yeah. But they just cut through. There's there's so many places where there's a hole in the wall, or or uh, you know these tribes have their land on the border and they don't have a wall because it's sov sovereign land. So you just walk to the wall and be like skirt right around, and you're in, and that's mm -hmm. it. Uh, so it's great to see that. I wonder what they how they define well border a policy. But in, in it's a one, start. I mean, in it's, one of it's these stories, uh, it was a story from ABC Seven. They interviewed a Honduran migrant who said, "I'm living worse than I lived in Honduras. It's very cold. I want to go home." Oh. And Venezuelans is, were saying that in Chicago as this well. This is typical. Back. Someone, some group is lying to these people and telling them to come and they arrive in freezing cities with no resources and they're like, I don't understand. They're like, the streets are paved with gold. They get to San Francisco and it's paved with poop. But I mean, Literal poop. Literally. <laughs> so these people are told there are yeah. jobs and they're, they're, they're like, oh, the United States has opened the border. They're saying, come, there's jobs for you. And they go, oh, okay. They hop on these trains, they ride thousands of miles and they show up and they're like, this is not correct. And the funny thing is, even now, Democrats are, are outraged over this, but you have progressive leftists that are still, and the woke, they're, mm -hmm. they're still very much in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, AOC is pretty mum on this one, right? She's the Trump concentration camps person. Yeah, she, that's right. She will, she will burn her political base if she comes out and says, no, this is a good thing. Now, hold on. She did, remember, when initially when she said, we're going to get work permits for them, housing for them, and people were screaming at her. So I think out she knows. Out front of the Roosevelt Hotel that's right. in New York. The Democrats are in trouble, even the progressive ones. She's such an opportunist. I, I could see her down yeah. the road, she, probably soon from now. Look what she said about yeah. Hamas. Yeah, Israel Palestine. Did you? See, she. This is this is someone who has a roots in, in in progressive leftism. Before she's in office, the uh, the activists were operating under the assumption that she was pro Palestine. Her position now is we need surgical strikes to assassinate Hamas. Hmm. And I'm like. Someone knows she who butters her bread. Yeah. Her constituents thing. do not like Hamas, but her woke progressive fan base do. Mm -hmm. So she she chooses the political mainstream, mm -hmm. which is the only path okay. towards. I mean, look, let's be let's be real. She represents the Bronx. That's not really a. It's not that progressive. It's mostly well, right? You know, if you're if you're, and if you're, I think that the, the let's be honest. There's a forty percent chance she's president. 
You think so? You think? Oh, yeah. AOC? If the culture doesn't shift away from that. That's right. It's possible. There, There's a real path for AOC to be president. I, we like to make fun of her because, well, for all the reasons. There's so many. <laughs> really yeah. For all reasons. the reasons. That's why she says I these think things right, that though. are surprising to us sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she right. sees mm-hmm. it. It's all politics. She doesn't have any moral center. No. It's whatever's sure. going to get her to the White House. But I, I think you're right. 40% might be the right number. Uh, not greater than chance, but significant. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that right now she has the gravitas, but she certainly could. Oh, no. You're saying down the line. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be... Not, gonna be not 2024. Bit. Yeah. But that's what I, I mean. I, I like, see her running for sure. She she has a... Like, 40% seems like a, uh, the correct number. Mm-hmm. There, there There is a possibility eight or 10 years mm-hmm. she has developed yeah. that, that personality. Maybe Nikki Haley will pick her as vice president. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Perhaps. Well, the rumor is she wants to run for, I don't know if this is true, she wants to be senator in New York or something. Yeah. I think that is true. I think she wants to do that. <sighs> Who would she you replace? Know, Schumer? Would she go after Schumer's that's, yep. seat? Yeah. yeah. Apparently that's, that's it. That's the one that's open yep. to her. It'll it'll probably happen. They're so crazy up there. I mean, we got we felt sort of good for getting Cuomo out. I mean, not because he was me too, because I didn't think he deserved that. I thought he should have been that was for trash. mass murder. They, um, yeah. I mean, I loved but then when we got re- Hochul. Remember when he released the video of him kissing everybody? <laughs> yeah. and he's like, I, I do this to everybody. And like, <laughs> so the response was, you admit to doing it more than we thought? Right. I mean, the thing I'm is, Italian. that's how you push people out of, that's how you push mm-hmm. people out of office in New York. You accuse them of random sexual harassment crap from years ago yeah. and then take their yeah. job and put in someone right. way worse. Enter Kathy Eric Hochul Adams. is a yep. disaster. Yeah. Well, Eric Adams worse. with his like, they're demanding 5 million from him. What did he even do? Nobody yep. even knows. It was from like 1993. Oh yeah. Hochul's, Hochul's really, really bad. I mean, she was talking about having disciples for the, for the shot mm-hmm. back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, now her whole thing of like, uh, She's in it with Letitia James. The hate speech thing. The two of them. They're gonna yeah, they're going to monitor people's social media. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's nuts. It's but that's what they vote for. But I, also, I love New York. It's my home state, and it's not all that bad. It's the city that ruins it for most of the the dang well, place. The so, city so, is spectacular, though. It's the greatest city on. I love the city. So let's let, 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 let's talk about the potential path towards twenty twenty four going Democrat. Mm-hmm. We have the story: Is China's mystery pneumonia sweeping Europe? Netherlands sees alarming surge in similar illness among children as terrifying video shows hazmat clad workers in China disinfecting schools. I keep seeing people say, don't fall for it, as we're getting more and more data of a strange respiratory illness. Well, now they're going to they're going to make sure that children are a vector of it. Because well, last time children were not a vector. Yeah. Can you overlay is, poll num- Trump's poll numbers right? over this right. chart? <laughs> so. Actually, you know, I think I think we actually can. Do I have? No, we don't have it right here. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Trump's poll lead expands with Biden losing black and Hispanic support. Well, you get the general idea. But is it the flu? I mean, they're calling it a pneumonia. Yeah. But it's also winter. Right. And people get sick more in winter. I don't know. Look, I'm not a doctor. Talk to your doctor. I'm just saying, surprise, surprise, as we're entering an election year, mm. all of a sudden we're getting this news. Hopefully it goes nowhere. But remain vigilant. Watch out for these attempts to shock and scare you and create panic so that you vote for their 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 choice of candidate. Yeah, I think we'll have to remember that it's also a lot of uh, anti-COVID stuff. I heard somebody saying that some of the video is lifted from the from COVID in the past. So some of the videos. Yeah, some of the videos like ah. cleaning and disinfecting and stuff like that was lifted from the past mm. because not a lot of media yeah, comes out of China people. unless it comes out of the China Post. Just but, like so. when CBS posted video of a right, busy exactly hospital like from New York, but it was yeah. Italy. Oh, exactly but that, like but that. numerous right. agencies did that for months. They yeah. kept showing yep. the same thing over and over. Same again. thing, yep. man. Same thing. That's but, what so, I heard. Oh, okay, so so here's look. I often when I'm reading the news, I can imagine possible scenarios when it comes to polling, like. You know, Moody's will come out and say the economy is doing so poorly. Biden's going to lose by this margin. And I'm imagining what happens. I cannot visualize what happens with Joe Biden. Oh, no. I mean, he can't he can't be the candidate. (laughs) They've got to get rid of him. But what do they do? Do they do they act like he's going to be the nominee and then abruptly at the convention just announce Gavin Newsom? Well, also, we have right now the the likely nominee from both parties is be are beyond the average life expectancy of an American (laughs) man. I know. I know. It's, It's just an honest observation that you cannot know what's going to happen i mean it's always true that you can't know it but especially now you can't know what's going to happen in this election okay to be fair to be fair trump is almost at the life expectancy which is i believe 79 yeah and biden is is dropping though the life expectancy for Mm -hmm. american men yep i i'm I'm not saying that means a whole lot when he's a year and a half away from the average Mm -hmm. life expectancy but i can picture biden getting oh wait no i'm sorry i'm sorry uh no, Jeremy was correct. It went it went down. Mm-hmm. It, so the yeah, latest it's like 73, I think. So it? the last time we checked, it was actually 70, 78, 79. 
And uh, the latest numbers are now 77.28. So in fact, you are correct, sir. So, Trump is 77. I can't imagine Biden in the White House uh, at all. I still can't. But I wonder if it's going to be him bowing out and they're going to play like this valiant way of him leaving. Like, oh, it was a noble thing to do. He stepped down. We're going to get, you know, the, or the he, or something bad. Or something it's got to be a happened. heart attack. Or do they, they play the tragedy card, which is right. what a lot of people in government love to do. So I, it's got, it's they got do likely. it a lot. It's got to be a heart attack or something. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Or they just prop him up and keep it going. McConnell's still there. I mean, he is old. Yeah, but it's, he can't win. Not a... No, but he's still there. I mean, you'd think someone would be like, we yeah. got to get you Wait, you're out saying Joe Biden can't win? Joe Biden can't win. No, I don't think that's true. You think, think he can I win? I think he oh, can yeah. win, yeah. Okay, let me say this. As of too. right now, all data indicates Biden will not win. Yep. There's a lot of reasons why he can win. I'm just saying... I think that it has been, thus far, it has been a great asset not a liability that Joe Biden is nearly dead. He, defeat, <laughs> he defeated Trump in 2020 by being a corpse. Like that was actually, that was actually the, the best recommendation that you could make for totally. him. Totally. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what, uh, uh, was it uh, Atlantic? Or who wrote that? I don't know. Stay alive, Joe Biden. All we need is your corporeal form. Yes. Dude, yeah. Jeez. That's one of my favorite Shane Gillis jokes. He says like, that's what Trump does. He gets inside people's minds, but you can't get into Joe's head. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> not Joe's there. not even there, man. Good luck with that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, so what's, what's the realistic scenario? You think Biden runs in whatever corpse-like fashion, which means not doing anything, but then people vote for him. Well, one thing you have to know about Democrats historically in elections is none of their internal rules actually matter. Yeah. So just as an example, if you're a Democrat and you die after an election is ostensibly underway, they just put your, they just let people vote for you. And then put your wife in. And then they put your wife in. There's nothing (laughs) legal about that. There's nothing... Per, no, no, per the bylaws, that, that they happened. just do it. They put your was, that, was that in Pennsylvania? Yeah. Was that in Pennsylvania? No. Where, where was that? Uh, we we did cover this. Yeah, there was a, a politician was running. He died just before election day. They said whatever, and then his wife was appointed to fill That's the role. So familiar, yeah, yeah. something like that. I think it was like a senator or something like that. How do they just pass that? How do they just say that's okay? Well, because like, because when uh, it's party rules. Well, a, gov- a governor is appoint senator if there's a vacancy. Yep. So like when when Obama got elected and Illinois had an open seat, Blagojevich famously said, I'm not giving this way this thing away for free or whatever the quote was. Right. He went to jail for it. Pardoned by Trump, right? Well, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Wow. <laughs> Illinois wow. is one this heck is of a, a This is a thing that keeps happening. In- but why the wife? Like, why would they just default to the wife? And not I some- think they were hoping for that for Fetterman. There's a lot of uh, widows who succeed their husbands in Congress. That happens a lot. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's weird. And there's articles about this going back to 2014. What? This is Lady Ballers too. <laughs> but, I'm, but, 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 yeah. so I, I understand this, but what's Joe Biden? Right. Joe Biden. What's oh the scenario goodness. then? I, this is why, this is my point. I, I, I can understand what you're saying. The rules don't matter. But so what is the realistic scenario that we witness in 2024? Are we as political junkies going to be watching? like figuratively it's a debate stage with an with an empty space and trump yelling at the wind ai ai biden yeah <laughs> no but i mean in the news we're gonna have trump 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 is there just gonna be nothing about the democrats at all yeah they could run everything the way he biden ran his campaign that's essentially the how the, that's essentially was their strategy in yeah. 2020 stay, stay in the basement be quiet the time. stay in the basement yeah and he just stayed down there things. with his weird studio they <laughs> manipulate the reality through corporate press a lot of people buy into it and that's that. If, if that's yeah. the case, if you if you compare the uh, political uh, polling average today to 2020, it is completely inverted and Trump is on a, on, on right. a path towards major victory. I think this time is different, though, because he's shown what he does as, as the president. He's shown like his hand. He doesn't have like the we don't know what he's going to be like. In the, in the, we, we really did. We, if, you, if you look back into his political history, you knew what he was going to be like. But the average person didn't know what Joe Biden was going to be like as president. I think he's already shown Perhaps. Like, what he's like. The NBC poll that we cited recently, just, just a moment ago, shows that if the Democrats have any other candidate, Trump loses. Yeah. It's one poll. Don't know if it's true, but mm-hmm. they say if it's Trump v. Biden, Biden loses. If it's Trump versus any Democratic candidate, Trump loses. People mm-hmm. love Newsom. I, I don't. Do they I really? No, demon. how do they? When I was how in California at the GOP debate, that dude walked up into the Reagan library. The GOP debate? Yeah, uh, the wow. second one. Yeah. And he, he showed up and people fawned over him. Sean Hannity practically made out with, with Newsom in front of him. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were wow. so smitten with each other. It was disgusting. And um, 
I, I talk to a lot of uh, conservative women who find Newsom charming. Yeah, they know he's, he's depraved nasty and gross. But there's he's something like a, about like him. He, Bundy, he's man. like this poster boy for politics yeah. of days old, where he's got the hair and all this stuff. They find something charming. I don't think they'd vote for him. It's like a lizard man. He, well, I know he is. I saw I, him change out of that suit. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like he's Democrat Mitt Romney though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think true. he's Romney is more like a saltine though. <laughs> who's ineffective and Newsom, Newsom has a past of a actual Ritz. depravity yeah. and a liar oh, like a big time liar I don't see yeah. how Newsom doesn't become president the really? guy yeah terrified I, just think about his career path destroy San Francisco become governor mm. destroy, destroy California, California. <laughs> what's yeah. next become president right, right. he steps into uh, the wasteland of America destroy uh, Middle East and South America and the uh, <laughs> Korean Peninsula and then become the Supreme Chancellor mm. there you go <laughs> yeah. something yep. like that He's got the look. But you, you, what would you say? Romney's a saltine. Yeah, I think so. Like so. dry and unpalatable. There's just nothing about. Like, what has he done? That's I, mean, I don't know about him as well as I know Newsom. But he seems like he hasn't been as effective in positive or negative ways. Well, as, we got uh, was it Newsom v. DeSantis on uh, Thursday? Oh yeah. yeah. When Romney was in Massachusetts for a while, right? Was that where he was? Yeah. Uh, he so was I don't governor. know. I don't know how, how people thought of him back then. And people liked him for he was a while, governor. to me, uh, he looks like he's just like Obama in many ways. <laughs> yeah. You know, Newsom? the way he talks. No, no, no. Uh, Romney. Romney. Right. The way Romney talks now is is basically he's like Obama. Yeah, you know, know they're it. they're they're into war. Uh, they're part of the uniparty. And uh, I'm tired of that. And Newsom is the king of all that crap. They all they all look up to Newsom. Yeah, I, I can imagine the Democratic uh, convention happens and they just say, we all the superdelegates have teamed up to vote for Newsom. Your votes don't matter. He apologized for his COVID ways. That's oh. enough for them. I don't think they'd even bring that up. Because he, he already apologized. They wouldn't they, even they, blow they, right they by it. Just, I mean... <sighs> Who else okay, would they pick on the left? Do you think Newsom is, is running 2024? You think he's going to be the guy? I mean, I, I, we all think he's secretly Well, running. no one will run against Biden. Mm -hmm. it, it all comes down to what happens with Biden. Yeah, but sure. if Biden is not running which I, I think to be clear biden is currently running to be president mm -hmm. so something yeah. has to change right then yeah i think newsom's probably the go-to guy i think they flirted with the idea of it being Buttigieg for a while that's just not going to happen no. oh mm -mm. gosh no he's terrible he's terrible and yeah. he took all that time off he's just a waste i mean when i was in east palestine after the train exploded the way he handled that whole situation those people were furious i mean furious yeah. and that's how a lot of america felt watching him visit i'm putting in quotes uh east palestine it was just it was atrocious. Uh, but I don't know. A lot of people can agree how terrible Newsom was in California, but they still, there's a lot of people who still love him, you know? Yep. So I could see him, but they had, like Jeremy's right. There's, he's not going to go against. Uh, but right. Biden. So is Biden, how's Biden going to be out? Well, Biden has even said know, Gavin man. Newsom could have my job. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You yeah. Know, and they're not going to have Kamala. recently. Yeah. Well, Kamala, nobody likes Kamala. Kamala nobody liked win. Kamala when she was right. running. What was right. it? She got like, th she had 3% of the vote before she dropped out of the primary. Right. Like she Biden, was trash like and everyone know, knows it. Yeah. Yep. She's also the one who is essentially responsible in part for this whole border thing. She was supposed to be in charge of it. Oh, right. And her, you know, and she was supposed to deal with the border. And Drop her office was like, nah, no, she isn't. That's <laughs> nah. What border? Right. Yeah. We're not Let supposed me... to do that. We're supposed to be dealing with the root causes of migration, which is violence against LGBTQ people in the Northern Triangle countries. Let me, uh, I'm going to pull up this story from uh, the New York Times. Are black voters leaving Democrats behind? They say polls suggest they might be. Well, we looked at an NBC poll that I think showed Trump with 24% of the black vote. And if that's true, according to the Wall Street Journal several years ago, they wrote an article in like 2018 that said that if Democrats can't maintain uh, 80 percent, if Republicans ever get more than 20, the Democrats are they can't win at all. Mm. So I'm not sure I believe these things. Right. There's been a lot of conservative personalities who said you are insane to think black voters are, are going to move towards Trump in any way. The New York Times asks the question and then the New York Post runs this story. Trump poll uh, lead uh, Trump polling lead expands with Biden losing black and Hispanic support. So I'm wondering if. It's not so much that Trump is gaining, but that because Biden is losing, it, it results in a vote vacuum. Mm. You don't need to vote for Trump if you're not voting. Trump is still going to create a gap by having people not vote for Joe Biden. Right. Yeah, I think that's what people are realizing. I saw a lot of people this weekend, I forget what it was, but people realizing that they had life better underneath, the Trump, underneath Trump than they have under Biden. They, as simple as that. they say Biden's lead among Hispanic voters is now 3% down from 14 in an Emerson poll last November. Wow, an 11-point shift. 
Uh, they say Biden's lead, am lead among African-Americans was still substantial, 47, but down 15 points. And then there was that uh, that poll in New York. Biden is up 10 points in a D plus 27. Yeah, he's only right. up 10. Well, Trump's also New York. You know? Yeah. There's a lot it? of people in New York who, who still love Trump and who understood Trump before a lot of the country did. Because if you're from New York, you know the certain type of character that you Trump was. You know this was. guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not all of these things. He's he's this big, bombastic. <laughs> right. Kid from Queens. He like, wasn't shocking to us. No. You know, when we saw him. Certainly but for not. a lot of the country, it was like, whoa, what is the New, this? The New York thing? Times is saying Trump's lead, uh, his support among black voters is 22%. So up, up several points. They say in 2020, Biden defeated Trump by 4.5 in the popular vote, though he won by much narrower margins in the swing states that saw him. Uh, and now look, I think it's ultimately, I wonder why we even talk about this stuff a year out. Mm. That's the thing. <laughs> so much is going to yeah. change. The uh, if, for example, Ron DeSantis wins in Iowa, which there's a very strong likelihood that he will, he's he's locked up thirty thousand precinct or uh, uh, and he's working real hard. Chairs, there right now, he's yeah. working real hard. Yep. Yeah. Then from January fifteenth through Super Tuesday, anything can happen. Just anything can happen, mm -hmm. and particularly in an election where going into the spring, all of Trump's legal problems catch up with him. Yeah, that's true. And we, I mean, so among the many things that can happen, we could be running someone from jail. I mean, that is not, <laughs> that is not an impossible scenario given how, how upside down topsy turvy the world is now. Uh, and, and certainly not constitutionally prohibited either. My view of this, I, I borrow this from my friend Alan Estrin over at Prager U. Uh, he, he points out that narrative is an actual force in the universe, sort of like gravity. It's not, narrative isn't something that we do, it's something that we observe. And if you go by that theory, then at a minimum, the story belongs to Donald Trump. It is Donald Trump's story. It doesn't mean he wins the election, uh, but I don't think people are ready. We, we haven't gotten to the end of the Donald Trump story yet. Yeah. And people want to know what the end of the Donald Trump story is more then they want to know <laughs> what the next is story so is. That's so true. Yeah. I love narrative. You can feel it. It's, you can yeah, feel it, it is a substance in the Carl, world. Carl Benjamin made this point to me. He did. This is like a year and a half ago. I was saying I thought DeSantis was the was the right choice. Um, he had a better temperament, proven leadership. Not that Trump, you know, didn't, but Trump's temperament wasn't there. And then Carl messaged me saying Trump's arc is not done. Trump's story must be completed. He made a video about it. And now things have shifted. So uh, you think... Even with Trump's legal problems, this lends itself to Trump winning and or, or at least very well being the nominee and, and making it to November. Well, whether he's the nominee or not, I think that it, maybe he takes the entire Republican Party down. Like may, right. maybe, for example, Ron DeSantis wins Iowa. He gets a big boost going into South Carolina. He somehow gets past Nikki mm -hmm. Haley there. Ron DeSantis becomes the nominee. Donald Trump splits the party and says he'll, he won't back Ron DeSantis. Donald Trump uh, loses the election for Republicans or DeSantis somehow wins and pardons Donald Trump and it's the greatest you know, what, whatever it is it's like whatever the craziest thing we can imagine <laughs> somehow the Donald Trump story still hasn't ended and the it, most likely it's outcome got to is come... the most uh, entertaining is that what Elon says yes the, the most yeah. likely outcome is so the most Elon's razor it's going to end with Trump outside the White House jumping midair then freeze frame <laughs> yeah. and we're just back to normal <laughs> I, I mean fair point I mean but Really, if you think about it, Trump's story arc can end in a lot of really crazy ways. Oh, yeah. No, For sure. They're not all good. Right. You know? Right. That. Like January 6th, nobody saw coming. Mm -mm. Imagine January 6th times 10 with an angry Donald Trump and some whatever his story arc becomes. Mm -hmm. Now, I guess the difference there is Trump was actually president when January 6th mm -hmm. was going down. He could have done a lot of things he did not do. Now he's not president. There's a lot of things he can't do. And so those just won't happen. But weird things can happen. My my bigger concern is probably his story could end rather unceremoniously through health issues. Oh yeah, mm. Mm. yeah. I mean, in 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 both the uh, 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 external and internal, certainly someone could hurt him, mm -hmm. or he could quite literally just at seventy seven, you know, yeah, be shuffled loose the mortal coil. What I'm worried about is like we've been witnessing absurdity, like exponentially grow every year yep. over the past few years. What is next year's October surprise going to be? <laughs> it's going to be oh so terrifying uh, and absurd. You know, like, or, or I'm also, you know, they've been dropping these hints lately about the internet apocalypse, you know, because solar flares. Right. Right. 
Is that yeah. going to happen? Like, are we not going to be able to talk and communicate anymore? I keep wondering about that. And I'm like, you know, we really should have kept up with the United States Postal Service. <laughs> you know, I want to yes. entertain that possibility because just imagine this scenario. It's a week before the election and solar flare, internet is cut out. Seriously. Internet's gone. Right. And the only thing available now is radio and terrestrial television. So we're and so, radio. And so what happens is you've got no internet. Industry is collapsed. But you turn the TV on and there's your good friend, Wolf Blitzer, letting you know that Joe Biden won. Trust yeah. him. Oh, that's it. Well, wouldn't it be Thank nice God. if we had paper ballots before the solar flare takes out the grid? That would mm. be so nice. They had paper ballots in Argentina. We need to push that. I wanted to, to take him to count those votes. Two, th three months. I think it was just one. I think it was just the one day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. One day. Impossible. Really, I don't understand. The one day. That's I know. It, I think they were, you know, even just. They, just they, they, they may try to turn off the country and turn it back on again. <laughs> internet goes down just in time for the election and yeah nobody well, can communicate nobody yes. can organize they did essentially do that in 2020 they basically shut down the world yeah true and, yes. then, and then tried to turn it back on yes. again and we still, <laughs> wow. we're still we've, we've up, come but... nowhere near the end of the consequences right that's crazy and back then as terrible as that was we could still subvert their narrative because we could communicate through the internet mm -hmm. they know now they got to get rid of that so we can't subvert them so we have to make ham wow. radios and homing pigeons right. some way to communicate ham fi Let's yeah. do it. Mm. You, you got to get our bank accounts. Very difficult. Tim Ham doesn't sound very good. I don't know. That might be. Well, no, food. we want we want Ham Internet. Yeah, I know. So we data transmission branded. through Ham, Let's which is ridiculously slow. Hamnet. <laughs> I like it. You're, yeah. you're better off just talking. Yeah. yeah On the street. Corner. Go out. Go outside and shout. That's it. Yeah. We'll but seriously, imagine just uh, like, actually imagine what it would be like if it was three days before the election and there's no Internet at all. And. We all are old enough to remember life before the internet. Yeah, mm -hmm. There's a lot of young people who do not. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's glorious How, in many ways. You know, actually, it's kind of crazy to think about. Like a like, uh, there's 20 year olds who do not know life without access to the internet. Mm -hmm. There are younger children. Man, it's it's 2023. So a kid born in two in 2000. Let's let's be realistic. Born in 2000, 2000, you are not old enough to understand life and cell phones and internet. No. By the time you are seven or eight, cell phones are ubiquitous. Yep. By the time you're 13, everyone's got one. Yep. Now you're 23 years old. You have never lived a moment without instant access information cell phone. And there's never been a point at which you've lost that. Yeah. You've gone to dead zones. You've been out at parties in the desert with no connectivity. But you've never been in a city with no internet. Right. That's crazy. That's where that fracturing that we were talking about earlier is going to take place. You know, because those people at that age, their, their identity online means as much to them as their identity out exactly. here. Exactly. Which yeah. is... That pretty profile. sad but like what you were saying earlier hopefully there's some people who re realize like, re re we reject that we want real life we want a family we're going to go to the supermarket but we it's want not to see sad people. it is necessary it's yeah. necessary to um you know curate your online presence mm -hmm. because otherwise your online presence is going to come back and get you fired from your job <laughs> yeah so you got to be careful of it yeah yeah I think but that... i am seeing i do think that more kids are kind of like of the gen z and if i can use my you know, just this year teenage son as an example, they're much more interested in being anonymous online. Mm. They don't want to put their names out there. They don't even necessarily want to put their faces out there. Wow. You know, they want to be in person with their friends and they want to have whatever the curated thing, but they don't put as much stock in their identity online. That's good. They use it. They do a lot of jokes. Just trolling. Just a lot of that stuff. Isn't that what Hoka wants to get rid of in her yeah, plan? Like, like I said, my... You know, my son uh, I'm watches anti, Matt Walsh. I'm anti-anonymity like, on the internet. I'm, really? To what degree, I like it. To what degree? Because I think it's it's appropriate for people to be able to be anonymous uh, for various reasons. But it's also, I think, it's weak for people too, especially if you go after people. I don't think that it's... Here's the problem. The problem is that anonymity on the internet allows for the ghettoizing of beliefs that are not approved by the regime. So a lot of people will say, well, I have to be I have to be anonymous on the Internet because if my boss finds out that I've got these views, they'll fire me. But you're only in the position where your boss could fire you for finding out about those views because you've allowed those views to be completely ghettoized through anonymity online. Hmm. If uh, if five million people came out today and said uh, the N word. I'm not recommending it, but <laughs> no one would ever get fired for saying the N word again. Like yeah, that, they would you, be able to. You wouldn't be able to. You yeah, would have brought right. that to a, you would have brought that to a conclusion. That little absurdity in our culture uh, would be brought to an end. 
the ghettoizing of our beliefs allows for the punishment of anyone who steps outside of the ghetto. Yeah. So if they catch you saying what you believe, they can fire you. But if we all just had our names on it, we're saying the things that we believe. Yeah. And you might say that we would have more cultural cohesion if we didn't have online anonymity too, because the online anonymity also allows us to become more radicalized in ways that prop left and right in ways that probably aren't ultimately good. So I, I, I agree, but I think it's a cultural issue that you can't solve with policy. You, you can't just be like, okay, no one's allowed to be anonymous on the internet. We're going to, we're, we're going to require this. My view is you should, you, if you want to be anonymous in your writings and in your interactions, you can be, but I think culturally we need to say, we don't interact with, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're, if you're not a serious person, I can choose not to interact with you. And then some people will choose. Wh to. Whenever I've said publicly that I don't, I think online anonymity is bad. One thing that comes up a lot is what about women? You women, violence against women will increase because men will follow them home and be able to get their home address and all of this. But Again, I think that that's a kind of ghetto mentality. The truth is that most of the horrible things that are said to women online aren't said by people who put their names on their accounts. I think just outside of that, though, I'm, I'm more worried about people wanting to express themselves in any way. Jobs be damned. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like I want people to say whatever they want, however they want, and express themselves that way. I personally prefer a real face and a real name. And that's what I'll always do. But I also understand there's a lot of people, not just because they're jobs, maybe it's family. And I understand, I, I personally think that's weak of them. But it's it's what they have to do, and I agree with Tim. If we can change the idea of it without policy, I'm okay. That's well, sure. Right I mean, there, and there are a lot of problems with trying to change it at a policy level. Yeah. For example, the First Amendment. I don't think that it is impossible to make a First Amendment compliant argument for why online anon anonymity isn't uh, isn't <clears throat> to, to create policy that curtails some some amount of online anonymity. And people will say. Uh, the founding fathers all wrote under pseudonyms, and yeah, r writing under pseudonyms is very important. But I don't know that saying to a woman, uh, "I want to rape you and murder you" in her DMs, is exactly the same as as like the Federalist Papers. Like I, there, there is there is a distinction in how right. online anonymity works compared to publishing. But anonymity, not all an anonymity is is that is the violent type. I've got like death threats from an, an anonymous people occasionally and it's it's terrible but there's some people who are using it for various reasons but this may sure. we're, we're, we're talking specifically about social media networks so mm -hmm. you can still publish an article online through a publication anonymously and they can choose to share it online through their accounts oh yeah i'm all yeah. for that and and additionally i want to point out too whatever whatever it is we do need there to be in most cases some kind of identification why if twitter chooses to allow pornography they should also have to screen for minors mm -hmm. It, it, it is unacceptable, in my opinion, that YouTube's answer is, uh, we'll leave the video up. It's the parents' issue, I guess, and some things will flag as 18 and up only, and then you have to you have to log in, and that's it. So a 13-year-old kid makes a fake account, says they're 18, and then they mm -hmm. can watch the graphic material again. If a kid walked into an adult bookstore and the guy let him in, that guy would be arrested, charged, the business would be shut down. You, It's illegal to let children. I do not accept that X allows adult material and children at the same time. I that 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 is an absurdity to oh, me. Yeah. How is that how is that reality? How did we as a society just decide one day that we no longer care to bar children from adult yeah. bookstores? Hold on, hold on. When did it become that you can you can forget going to Pornhub? You can Google almost anything and get it in your results. I got like it'll actually come up in your results. You Go can accidentally Google. do stuff. I used to, <laughs> I used to work with a company and they were looking for fans and they were looking they looked there's this company called big ass fans and oh. Uh, oh, yeah, they looked at they just googled it instead of going directly to the website and one of my colleagues was like uh by the way everybody don't just google that like you really <laughs> just want to put in the right website yeah we're gonna go to super chats so if you haven't already would you kindly smash that like button subscribe to this channel share the show with your friends and head over to timcast.com click join us because the uncensored members only show will be a whole lot of fun we're going to take calls from you guys our members and uh, we'll talk to you live here we go. Kilted Carnivore says, not first again. Unfortunately, you were first. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder says, Tim, great seeing you on Pop Culture Crisis 500 today. Although now I'm going to have to make a meme video on your reaction to crisis parties and hopefully drop it tomorrow. <laughs> Pop Culture <laughs> Crisis uh, had its 500th episode today. That's correct. So that's absolutely fantastic. For those that are interested in pop culture uh, conversations. So the way to describe it is, Tim Cass is very political. And then we get into cultural stuff like we did today, but yep. typically political. Uh, pop culture crisis is the inverse. 
it is pop culture and then gets into the cultural uh, elements and stuff. So we talked about uh, AI girlfriends, how they uh, EV magazine put out an, uh, an aggregate of all of the different ideal girlfriends. They polled like 2000 people in each state and then took the keywords and AI generated images of women. And it's really it's got fascinating implications because wow. like California, the ideal girlfriend is ethnically ambiguous. I'm like, well, it makes sense. You've got a large yeah. black population, Hispanic, Asian, and yeah. white. And if you combine everything they want, you get someone who could be any one of them. Yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of stories we cover there. Uh, they talk about other stuff. Video games, they're talking about, I guess, GTA, the new one, the main character is a single mother. That's correct. Wow. <laughs> this yeah. movie's good. In this right, economy. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I think the game will make money, but it's going to be for its online components. Definitely. I don't think people wow. are going to care for the story. Definitely. It was a good episode. Please check it out. I was on there as well. Nice. All right, get off my lawn. Says I see that Subverse SCNR is up and running again. It's still part of Timcast Media. Scanner is its own company. It is not a part of uh, Timcast. It's it was separate. It was started a long time ago, and after some legal issues that were resolved, it is now back. And uh, you should definitely check out Shane's article. Uh, what's the title of it? The Demon Hunters. The Demon Hunters. Yeah. It is. Uh, it is about men who run sting operations tracking child abusers child predators and yeah. gets them arrested yep it, yeah you know every state is different has different laws on what you can do as a civilian to get someone arrested for these crimes and in ohio they have to be in possession of the uh the bad stuff uh and they were so a few of these guys and the cops came came and we got them arrested and it was beautiful and they do it all the time they travel the whole country wow. matthew Hammond says why has the day uh why is the daily wire not spun off its movie division into a separate company have theatrical releases followed by video on demand and streaming info on DW Plus. You're not reaching non DW members. Yeah, I mean that's true, but it's also self reinforcing. That's like, I mean, Netflix doesn't reach non Netflix members, but we don't care because they have 200 million members. Right. Um, but they have 200 million members because of exclusivity, which over time drove large subscription bases. So there's, you know, it's it's a challenge. Listen, business models shift and change. Uh, we. We obviously, with what is a woman, just as an example, found a way to have it be exclusive for a period, and then we put it out for free on X, and it became one of the most viewed documentaries probably of all time. So to say that we're only meet, only reaching our members, I don't think that's true. I think it's true to say that we only reach our members when we only reach our members. Uh, but will we eventually break out uh, into theatrical and other things? I think we will. But you have to be honest, too. There is no world where this film could have ever come out in theaters. <laughs> There is, what what is Angel Studios? Uh, yep. They use that. Um, what is it called? Fathom, I mm -hmm. think it was. And I don't Fathom even. Events. I don't even think they would. No, they would yeah, not. They, they'd, I'm sorry. They'd, they'd be like oh, Angel damn, Studios damn. has a movie coming out in theaters on Friday. Friday shift called the shift. Yeah, yeah. which was produced by uh, a buddy of mine, and and they're doing great with that model. I'm I'm very interested in putting some of our stuff in theaters. But again, do you think that anybody's gonna? You couldn't. This is a true story. Every time we release a movie, we've been covered by the Hollywood trades. Deadline, Hollywood Reporter, etc. They won't even write about the fact that we made Lady Ballers. <laughs> well, out.com yeah. did. You think theaters uh, are going to actually take this movie? You know, get uh, I think it's time for Jeremy's cinema. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's just like every time they say no. I mean, have you publicly told the story of Together Again? No. Should you? I, I don't know if you're allowed to. Well, I mean, I'm allowed to. If you want to. So, I mean, people may not know that uh, I was in one of the most successful bands of all time. Yes. From from the 1950s through today, uh, Smokey Mike and the God King. <laughs> and two years ago, Daily Wire was putting on a show at the Ryman Auditorium. You know, it's the it's one of the most famous music venues in the world. And so it seemed to me that if we were going to do a show there, we should perform a song. You got to if you're can't just get up there and talk politics at the Ryman. You got to sing. And so I had this fun idea that we should do the song by the Turtles called Together Again. No, Happy Together. I, I'm sorry, called Happy Together. Well, I mean, well, it's an awesome song. Nobody's ever been unhappy listening <laughs> right. to Happy Together. And I had this funny idea that, that Smokey Mike, Michael Knowles, and I could play every instrument as we had done the year previous in our music video. We, we did a cover of the, of the Charles Brown song, Please Come Home for Christmas. And played all the instruments, and it was a lot of fun. So I thought, well, we'll play every instrument, and the end of Happy Together is, I mean, there's a lot going on. I thought it'd be fun. We'd be playing trumpets and trombones and drums, and we'll be, get a big LED screen up there, and it'll be us playing, being accompanied by us. I had a whole vision for it. So I reached out to my team, and I said, you know, go get me the rights. They they talked to the guys at the Ryman. You know, what's it usually cost to get the rights for a one-time live, live performance of a song at the Ryman? 
Uh, you you have to know because for live performances and video, you have to get sign off. If you're just going to record audio of someone's song, you don't have to get any sign off, right? That's a mechanical royalty. But for for live performances and and video, there's a uh, a form. It's it's usually fifteen hundred bucks, you know. So we we reached out to the publishers for the turtles and we offered them fifteen hundred bucks to let us do uh, happy together, and they came back and said no. I was pretty surprised by that, so I called a buddy of mine who's a multi-Grammy award-winning songwriter, and I said, hey, listen, here's what happened. They, they said no, and he said, I didn't even really, I've never fully realized that we could say no. He said, you know, just basically once a month, my publisher sends me a stack of papers, I sign them, and then I collect my money. Like, that's just, yeah. it's, it's very, uh, you know, perfunctory. So I go back to my team, and I said, listen, this something doesn't smell right here. This is a weird thing. Well, let's... Offer them fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> and my uh, my GC was like, "Are you adding? That's that's ten times more than they told us is the going rate." And I said, "Yeah, but it's I want to know." Offer them fifteen thousand dollars. Go back to the publisher for the turtles. Offer them fifteen thousand dollars. They come back with a no the next day. Like, don't even wait. They don't even think about it. No. I said, "All right, offer them one hundred fifty thousand dollars." <laughs> oh my goodness! I said, "Are you out of your mind to to perform a song one single time on stage at the Ryman? One hundred fifty thousand dollars?" I said. I'm like, bro, do you even own a shampoo company? Like, what do, you, <laughs> do you even own a razor company? Of course, go offer them $150,000. <laughs> so we offer them $150,000. They turn us down flat. Wow. Uh, That's crazy. Uh, what One thinks that perhaps it has something to do with us being us, right? They must be doing really well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The turtles are lousy with $150,000 <laughs> offers like for one night performances. So... Uh, I'm pretty dispirited and you know, we've burned up a lot of time with this. Now the show is is only a week away, and I'd basically given up on it, and I'm in the shower, and I just had this idea for a song kind of in the vein of Good Vibrations, Happy Together, uh, Mr. Blue Sky, that that sort of tune for a song, and, and it's called Together Again. And I, I came to the office where I have a keyboard set up at my office, and I very quickly scratched it out, and I brought Smokey Mike in the office, and I said, I think we could pull this off. And he's like, we have less than one week. <laughs> And we did it. We we spent the hundred and fifty thousand, not on licensing, uh, happy together, but on creating this video at the last minute. I mean, people were literally up around the clock producing this video. We were sound checking on stage at the Ryman, and we didn't have the finished video yet. Wow! Four hours before the show. Then the show gets there. Uh, intermission comes along. People come back from intermission. Thunder crackles through the Ryman, and this the uh-huh. the stage comes to life, and we. Smokey Mike and the God King made their reunion performance, and I got the exact reaction that I wanted, which was I could see the people kind of still in the faint light of the front row going, what the? Is <laughs> Are they kidding? Is this real? Is this serious? Which to me is always the funniest joke. Yes. As I say in my Razor commercial, uh, just because it's a joke doesn't mean it isn't real. <laughs> right? yes. that's, that's kind of my approach to I was at that things. show. Was a good oh, nice. yeah. Yeah, it was oh wow! You you had to see it live. Yeah. Oh, I that's sure amazing. amazing. Yeah, it, cool. it, it actually is a really good song. Somebody should cover it one of these days. I yeah. Think that it's, I think it's got potential. Cool. Well, so uh, we should probably announce it too because it's two weeks out. But uh, we'll I'll keep it relatively vague. Uh, Carter and I, mostly Carter Banks, the Delta production. We have a modern cover of uh, J- uh, Smokey Mike and the God King together again. And m- my basic idea was. Not too dissimilar to the experience you had with them telling you no, despite you offering lots of money. The the stranglehold the 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 woke institutions mm-hmm. have on these industries. I'm like, we need a double f u. I want to do this thing. So that'll be in a couple weeks, but we'll have more information later. We we wrapped the music video on it. We're basically making fun of modern pop. We made a modern modern synth pop Amazing. version. Oh, I, when awesome. it comes out, I ask everyone listening to please tag Anthony Fantano in that video. <laughs> My least favorite person in music criticism. Yeah. But I'll work so, on that. so this will be fun. But uh, let's uh, let's uh, we'll read some more re- read some more super chats. Let's uh, let's I'm gonna try to grab a good one. Uh, let's see, a lot of people talking about me being on pop culture crisis. That's fantastic. Villainous V says Tim, the woke lefties in Disney are more like those kids who have a PS4, but then get a PS5 and tell their parents, "Oh yeah, why don't I just give the PS4 to their friends while the parents get screwed?" What does that mean? <laughs> I didn't track it. Yeah, me neither. Track it. All right. The dude abide says here in Illinois, they tried asking surrounding towns throughout the state to take the migrants in an effort to clean up Chicago. Assuming they're building large migrant camps must mean they weren't successful. 
Illinois is tired of Chicago. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty wild, too. The the aldermen are livid the way the city is being run during the summer of love, summer of love riots. The city diverted the riots into the neighborhoods by raising the bridges, right. sacrificing the residents for the financial and, and market districts. Medieval. <laughs> yeah, it's so hilarious, man. Good Lord. The Dude Abides asks, Jeremy, is Matt Walsh going to be the grumpy dwarf? <laughs> <laughs> well, now he is. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, uh, Lady Ballers has basically like the whole Daily Wire crew in it. Oh, yeah. Does Is Snow White and other movies going to be utilizing? Well, guys? Snow White, you know, we have announced that uh, our own Brett Cooper will play the titular character. And uh, as to who else will be in it, I think, you know, we'll we'll solve that as we go. But... On Lady Ballers in particular, we went out to a lot of actors, and they all told us no. They said no? <laughs> oh, yeah. And I don't just mean that we went out to, like, you know, the kind of actors who would say no. We went out to actors who are conservative. We went out to actors who've told us in the past we'd walk across class to be in a movie with you. Please put us in your next Day of the Wire movie. We went out to actors who have already been canceled. Wow. And it's not as though they read the script and didn't like it and then said no. M many of them... On the phone, hey, you want to do a movie? Hundred percent. What's it about? It's about this ragtag bunch of high school, uh, former high school basketball players who realize that they can embrace modern gender theory and compete as women. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do, you know, that's crazy. Be so because, of course, they can't. Which is why when people say, "Hey, what if you put this in theaters?" Of, co of course, you can't put this this right. movie in theaters. There's there. This is this is the third rail. For the left, this is their most religious issue. This mm. is the thing they care about the most, because it's the ultimate attack on reality itself, which is the the necessary precondition to their utopia I, coming to pass. I Gina think I'm, I think I'm gonna be a great wicked queen. She would be. Yeah. I think I'm gonna buy a theater. Oh, that's a great. I idea. don't think we'll be able to do big blockbuster releases, but we will be able to have consistently in rotation movies from you guys and from Angel Studios and whatever. Love it. And it would just be a small local thing. I don't think we'd break the bank with it, but we got to build these physical spaces and have these opportunities. That's right. You know, over the holiday weekend, I was like, we should go see a movie. I don't know. We're bored. What are we going to do? What did we do? We played poker because there's nothing to do. Yeah. And But it was fun. It was fun. We had a blast. It, it really is fun social activity. We were looking up movies and it's like wish. And I'm just like, there's nothing. There's nothing. I'd, I'd, I'd love to take a Friday night. We are going to see Shift on, uh, on Friday. So we're excited for that. And then, of course, very easily, we just have to uh, log into DW Plus to watch Lady Ballers. So that's that's rather simple for us. And then, uh, oh, this is cool. Friday's going to be wild. We uh, we're gonna we're gonna go see Shift. We're gonna be hanging out on the Culture War with Tyler Fisher, who's in Lady Ballers. That's right. And he's a very funny guy. And uh, we have the Defiant coming to uh, IRL, and they're going to be playing Correct. live in our new musical setup. Incredible. So it's just really really fun stuff. But let's uh, we'll will, grab... you, will you have a di will you have a disco ball by Friday? <laughs> no. But we could. Uh, you really ought to work on that, Tim. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, we have a crazy plan. I guess it's cool if you don't. Um. <laughs> the new, the new, the new facility that we're building is going to be the most ridiculous thing ever. I, 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 I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm spending millions of dollars. This is insane. <laughs> it's we, crazy. We're, we're building one of the biggest private skate facilities for this new show. We've got plans for this crazy uh, um, shipping container music studio. Oh, sick. it's a oh, wow. it's a forty foot tall building with a three story structure inside of it. Like you, and I, you, I, you I, mentioned that to me before the show, but I don't under, I, I understand what you're describing, but I don't understand why. Why well, why build a building in the building? What's what's the advantage? So you have you have a steel building mm -hmm. that is uh, thirty eight feet by eight inch uh, thirty eight uh, eight tall in the center. Inside of it, it's insulated, climate controlled. You can, all up the ceiling. We're going to have uh, we're building a skate park inside that mm -hmm. also is designed to function as a stage in the corner where the bowl section is. So there can be live performances of stand up and music. We're going to have on one wall movie theater mm. length projection screen, massive and a massive hanging projector. Then in the back, you have a 25 by um, 75 structure. First floor is a kitchen and a recording studio. Second floor is a uh, bar, lounge, and IRL studio. And third floor is going to be lounge movie theater. And so uh, the point is uh, morning, like we're, we're, we're doing a variety of shows in the first floor. IRL on the second floor. Mm. The kitchen will be potentially for, probably just for, you know, you're getting your drinks, you're getting your Cooking food, whatever. Cooking show. Maybe. Outside to the left is going to be a uh, $500,000 concrete skate park. 
Wow. And inside is going to be probably a two or three hundred thousand dollar concrete, uh, not concrete, a uh, wooden skate park. So it can be a bit more modular. We can change it. And this is for our massive action sports uh, program that we're launching. We're working with Richie Jackson, one of the best pros ever. He's a street magician. And we've got a bunch of other people involved. We're launching a board company and, and, and a line of products. So the point is, like, I'm a skateboarder. When the wokeness started coming and attacking something that I cared about, I just launched every nuclear weapon <laughs> that we had at it and said, no way, not happening. I never filmed skateboarding. I'm always minding my business. And then only recently I started filming and, you know, I'm putting out clips that are getting a decent amount of attention because people were like, I didn't realize Tim was actually this good at skateboarding. And in fact, I'm particularly good. So I always just kind of wanted to mind my own business and say, I don't care. You do whatever you want. But now they really are insulting and attacking skateboarding. And I'll tell you what, I went to go uh, skate in D.C. And for no reason, I start getting attacked by these local skate companies, these, these team riders. Hmm. They start insulting me and posting online and various forums lying about my capabilities. And I'm like, this has gone too far. I will mind my own business, but you go online and attack me for no reason when I said nothing to you and then lie and claim I can't skate. They said in these forums, Tim Pool can't do pop shove it's, which is like, for those that don't know, pop shove it is one of the first things that your kid learns. It's where the board spins one time. And so I have a trick that I put up. It's got 600,000 views on Instagram and it's getting a bunch of attention because it's a ridiculous trick well beyond the capabilities of any of these people. And that pissed me off when I'm when I'm seeing the reaction to wokeness invading these sports, especially, you know, we're good friends with Taylor Silverman. She works works with us. And she is a female uh, skateboarding athlete who lost money to male competitors. Yeah. And when she said, like, what's going on? What really bothered me were, were all of these industry heads who are like, we completely agree with you. This stuff's wrong, but we won't say anything. And then I'm like, I will. I'm going to say it as loud as I can. And then when these woke people try insulting me, they write, you know, we did a culture war episode with Richie Jackson and Taylor and uh, Dennis, our filmer. And when they start insulting, saying, ha, Tim Pool, blah, blah, I'm like, listen, buddy, we've got a multi-million dollar skate facility. We're building big parks and we're inviting pros out. And the pros have already come and filmed with us. We're leaving you behind. Your crackpot, far left garbage will have nothing to do with the things mm -hmm. that we love and care about. And we're already winning. And one day you will wake up in the corner crying to yourself because you are not going to be able to hang out because you're the weirdo. But I'll tell you what, you drop all that weirdness. I don't care what you believe. Come skate. You want to be weird and a weird activist? Yeah. Then mm -hmm. you're not skating with us. Exactly. Anyway, that's 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 my 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 passion and my rage right now. So here I am at 37, almost 38. And I'm like, time to get back in shape and get back to the crazy tricks I used to do when I was 19 so I can reinforce and kick these people out. <laughs> I, I Love look, it. I've got pro skateboarders who have hit me up voted for Trump. Mm. Prominent, 28-year-old, well-known, six-figure income, not the biggest skateboarders in the world. And they're like, but I can't say anything, dude. Like, I'll get my sponsors dropped. And I'm like, yeah. I am sick of that. Yeah. yeah. It just, I get it. But so, so my answer was simply this. I talked to these big companies and I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. When you tell your writers not to say these things because they'll get, get, get kicked off the team, I'm going to give your writer double what you were paying them. Then they can say whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And they're like, ooh. <laughs> a couple of them were like, yes. Because I, I don't only like associating with the ones who are like, let's do it, man. Yeah. And they're more cool about it. All right, here we go. Golden Fleece Games says, referring to your France segments from earlier, the city of Lyon is pronounced Lyon, not Lyon. Yes, I learned that yeah. after. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not from France. You know. Uh, Greg Duvier says, Jeremy's Silent Night Dark Chocolate is amazing. Is that something you have? Hey, thank you. Yeah, we just released our... Dark chocolate and a uh, milk chocolate with peppermint for Christmas. Mm. Ooh, that oh. sounds great. We'll have to order more. We actually have a whole bunch still okay. here. We have uh, we have ordered large amounts of Jeremy's chocolate. Nuts and nutless? Yep. And uh, <laughs> everybody preferred the without nuts. I sure did. Yeah. 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 Like, like three But I don't like nuts in my chocolate, just mm. as a rule. I'm allergic to almonds. What? Well, yeah. that, that hurts. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, as a somewhat famous chocolatier, I know it's somewhat... Uh, counterproductive but i actually so prefer dark chocolate to milk chocolate mm. agreed Same. so i'm yeah, i'm very too. happy to finally have a great dark too. chocolate out and before i left the country six months ago a big part of what we were doing was taste testing and refining and making notes and i think we came up with a really uh, a really good recipe so i'm glad people are getting to experience it now let's get a couple more in here uh ian slater says jeremy where can actors submit headshots and resumes for future movie projects yep uh 
our producer on most of these projects is Dallas Sonier from Bonfire Legend. He he's been working with us since we first got into doing features, uh, and and he's an he's very accessible. If you reach out to Dallas online, you'll almost certainly get a response from him. He's on Twitter as Bonfire Legend, on Instagram as Bonfire Legend. Th- that is always the best place. Uh, it, you know, Daily Wire proper is a hard place to submit for all kinds of reasons. You know, there, there's a lot of legal restrictions. I can't even open emails anymore, right? Because you just you you put yourself in positions of high liability, but Dallas is a great a great first try, and we're you know we're always looking for new talent. Yeah, I was I was saying um, it would be great to see Ian get involved in some projects, but mm-hmm. as long as his character is going to be a Christian conservative suit wearing <laughs> button down type, he can't be a like it, it has to be that. Yeah, I would like to see that. Yes, uh, let's see. We'll get, we'll grab one more. Paul Taskalos says, Jeremy, I own a private jet charter company called Vault Aviation. I'll happily sell you the company so you can rebrand it the Daily Flyer. No better way to troll the climate cult than getting into carbon creation culture. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty great idea. I love it. <laughs> who, who doesn't want Jeremy's Airlines? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, that's the joke. It's like idiocracy. Everything was probably. Costco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen with the culture war is just, this would be a great skit, by the way. Maybe you guys should do it where it's, you know, slowly over time. It's a narration of Jeremy just kept launching companies after every other company abandoned its <laughs> principles. And then it ends with you as an old man and you're like sitting on a throne of gold and you just, everything in the United States is Jeremy's. The roads have your name on it. The toll toll booths. You just bought it all. I mean, you basically, you basically just took my entire vision for my life and reduced <laughs> it to a skit. I don't know. All right, everybody, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share this show with your friends, head over to TimCast.com, click join us. The Uncensored uncensored Members Only show is coming up in a few minutes. We're going to take calls from you guys. It'll be a whole lot of fun. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Jeremy, do you want to shout anything out? Nope. Just uh, Lady Ballers dropping on December 1st. That's Friday for Daily Wire Plus members. Uh, If you got kids, go over to Bent Key. And uh, if you've got a face, shave it with Jeremy's razors. When we we finally do get our coffee shop open, what we wanted to do was Saturday morning cartoons was the event we call it. Yeah. The idea is to have families come with catered food, bring their kids, and the TVs will play approved, family-friendly kids content. Mm. And I would love to have uh, Benke when we get to that point. I know where you can find some. Absolutely. I got two things. Please go and read The Demon Hunters. It's one of the most important stories I've ever written. And uh, support Alex and his work. Uh, That's at scanner.com, scnr.com. And the second thing is, uh, you and I talk a a lot about synchronicities and weird things that match up. And today is actually the year anniversary of Kanye West coming here, which is the day I met him. Well, it's the year anniversary of uh, Who Is They, though? Who Is They? And uh, that story I wrote that weekend changed my life forever and opened up a lot of new opportunities. So thank you for that. And thanks to Ye. And here's to Libby. (laughs) It's such an honor that Who Is They, though, is was, <laughs> was born out of they said that right yeah. was born out of this weird moment we had beautiful Life's beautiful great. time it's been a crazy year uh, i'm libby emmons i would like to shout out the postmillennial.com you can become a subscriber at the postmillennial.com slash subscribe it has indeed been a crazy year yes yeah and i am surge.com i am all over the internet as surge.com please argue with me on twix <laughs> i do enjoy it uh yeah let's go to the after show time We'll see you all over at TimCast.com in a couple minutes. Thanks for hanging out.